My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Share the word of the Lord. The first time I came to this place by the leading of the Holy Spirit and the orchestration of his message. You know, Paul said in Galatians 2 verse 2, he said, I went up to Jerusalem by revelation. And Simeon was in the, in the temple praying when they brought Jesus. And he said he went into the temple by the Spirit. First time I was brought here by the message of God, the first thing that threw me was when I beheld face to face Mama G. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, we were discipled in our earlier days by the, the movie industries. Uh, it, it looked as if the stories, the stories there were more potent. Not the one now, anyway. The one now is a burden to the soul. <laughs> but those days, movies were, were gospel. They are gospel messages. And today again, I had the privilege of driving down from a weary with Mama. And we had a smooth ride. Can we celebrate God for her service? And you see, when you begin to walk with spirits, you discover that the technology of announcing a man and placing influence on the life of a man is beyond the charisma that such a man portrays. It is God himself that raises a man because these things are entrustments. And I began to understand why I know many gifted young men in the East, but they are not known. Until the heart of a man is tried, God will not place influence on him. And even if he gathers a thousand people, his words will not sustain the potency to pierce through their soul. Until God deals with a man, he has no story for his generation. Everybody that is here, the ministers of God, pastor from Lagos, it's an honor to meet you and every other person, the leaders from all the campuses. Thank you for coming. Trust that the Lord will speak to us by his message. So this evening, our attempt to define a calling, our attempt to define what a calling is. Father, thank you for the privilege again to look into your word we trust that you will speak to us from the heights of Zion where the essence of our reality is captured in articulate speech in the utterance of spirits and we ask that Lord by the help of your grace you will fire those immortal utterances that were spoken before the foundations of the world into the hearts of hearts so that every one of us beyond the walls of a man we hear the whispers of Zion and those echoes will begin to trouble us with burdens burdens that will make us to submit our lives completely to the government of your kingdom and walk in the direction of our ordinations help us tonight Lord we pray thank you Father in Jesus precious name if the Lord begins to help you and begins to furnish burdens in your heart. Those burdens you may not necessarily understand the impact, the import and the effect of those burdens. But most times when God wants to redefine the perspective of a generation, what he does is that he creates burdens in their hearts and those burdens are designed to draw a generation back to the womb of the spirit. So that the immortal spirit of God that dwells in the tabernacles of Zion 
can educate humankind afresh. Because oftentimes when God wants to raise a generation, He's raising a generation because the fathers have completed the quota of the assignment. And the crisis of the divine at such time is the fact that the younger generation that is saddled with the responsibility of bringing perspective as touching what is in the heart of the father may not be experienced enough to handle hallowed matters. The fathers may have sat on scriptures for 60 years, some of them for 50 years. So every line, every phrase in the Bible, if you can put three words together, like a concordance, they will tell you everywhere you can find those words in scriptures. They have mastered every doctrine that formed the bedrock of our belief system. And God now realizes that the assignment of the fathers are over and he wants to raise a younger generation. Sometimes these young people that the mark of ordination is upon their lives may not even have read the Bible cover to cover. So obviously they are oblivious as touching the complete counsel of God. If you ask them about certain doctrines, they may not be able to articulate it correctly because even the knowledge of the Bible has not sufficiently been furnished in their hearts. But these are the generations that have the heart disposition that the Father is looking for in order to raise, to bring perspective to the kingdom. By what means can a younger generation that have not even studied the Bible bring the counsel of God when the fathers are there that understand the ways of the Spirit? The only way by which God can create a voice in the heart of a younger generation in order to shift the kingdom in the direction that the kingdom should go is by the technology of bodies. So what God does most of the times is that He begins to furnish bodies in their hearts. And they don't understand what the body is about. But what the body does is that He separates them from that generation for a season. And then God draws them into Himself. And then the Holy Spirit, the ancient spirit that crafted all forms of wisdom, begins to pour Himself into their soul. So the man may not understand the Bible, so to say, but the Spirit of God is furnished on the tablets of his heart so strong that every time he comes, he has a voice. And when he begins to cry, the first thing that his voice does is that he opens the heaven so that a new wave of the Spirit of God will come. It is that wave of the Spirit of God that comes that raises the army. The army that will study the ways of God in order for the church to find an exodus in a new direction. Not because the fathers necessarily have failed, but what God is doing is not articulated within the scope of their dealings. So every time they speak, they speak within the boundary of the dealings of God on their life. But God wants to move forward. Most times, the conflict arises when the fathers don't give room to the younger generation to bring the counsel of God. Because they assume that because they are at the pinnacle of what God is doing in that season, the move of God will die with them. But when we study the lexicon of the move of God, we realize that the move of God is transgeneration. It doesn't end with man. It's a flow of spirits. And this is why in a strategic season like this, when God is calling, when God is stretching his hand from the spirit realm and raising a generation, every one of us must become consistent and aligned to the voice of the bodies that is in our heart. All of us, we study the same doctrine, but what will distinguish us in this kingdom is the quality of our consecration. Because our consecration will be consistent with the ordinations of God upon our lives. And that is where our callings begin to have definition. I want to talk about callings this morning because some of the things I will be sharing, most of you may not know the quality and scope of assignment you are supposed to carry out because you are seeing yourself as a teenager of 19 years old and the last time you checked you have not read the whole bible so your burden is to read the bible it's very important to read the bible and you will always read it even when you are walking in your calling the bible said in first timothy chapter 4 verse 13 paul was writing to the young boy the young boy that he left in ephesus who was ordaining elders he wrote to him he said until i come give attendance to reading to exhortation and to doctrine because it is very important that you are rich in the word of God. It will help you to articulate the burdens of God that will be encapsulated in the chambers of your heart. But deeper than that is a dealing that God is bringing you into because there is a calling upon your life. Callings 
are very deep. But callings can only be realized when discernment is accurate. A generation will be lost if a generation does not have discernment. The reason you can neglect the burdens of God that comes to your heart is because there is something wrong with your discernment. You see, in the days of John the Baptist, this gospel may not be very conventional. You have to pardon me. I'm going somewhere. By the time I reach where I'm going, the people that are having this experience, they will know. This is why sometimes we are bold to share what we are sharing because before we started sharing it, the Holy Ghost is already touching the heart of people. So when we talk, they may not more understand what we are saying, but every time they hear, there will be an echo in their heart because they know that what this man is saying, the day we were summoned in the assembly of eternity before we came into time as seeds of eternity, those utterances were spoken into us. The first time I heard Apostle Arume talking, I was like, what is he saying? What is this man saying? But I went home, I couldn't sleep. Because what he is saying, I know that thing from the spirit realm before I was born. You know, he said, before you were born, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. So that guy came, he was born into the family of priests. But what was running in his spirit was the DNA of a prophet. So he could obey and follow the routine of priesthood, but he is a prophet. So every time you talk about the prophetic, he may not understand you, but something will move on his inside. Because that is his DNA. So this thing we are sharing now, the people that are numbered, the thing will be in your heart. You will not hear me in your head, you will hear me in your heart. Because when I'm done talking, you, will not, you may not have full understanding, but you will have bodies. You may live here and food will lose taste, water will lose taste. Why? Because the voice will be an echo from eternity and it will be stirring a chord within the depths and the deep chambers of your soul. The reason most times we don't value bodies is because discernment is lacking. And discernment is lacking when the church is turned in the wrong direction. In a generation where God is purging men, the emphasis in the church may be about prosperity. And because prosperity becomes our consciousness, many may not discern that God is purging his house. So the more the church becomes rich, the more we become citizens of Babylon. The more we become rich, the more we will become servants of the God of commerce. The more we become rich and influential, the more we will become agents of mammon. The reason is because our discernment has been compromised because the emphasis are wrong. Isaiah prophesied 700 years before the coming of the Messiah. And he said, for the Messiah to come, a prophet must rise that will cry from the wilderness. But in the day of the unveiling of the Messiah, everything was about the synagogue. So people traveled for many kilometers, three times in a year, to come to the synagogue to meet God. The rituals were not wrong in themselves. But what they did not know was that the heavens, there was a resonance in heaven. And at that time, what the heavens was looking for are men that will go toward the backsides of the wilderness. Because the voice that will bring the Messiah will not cry from the synagogue. That voice will cry from what? The wilderness. But the emphasis was about the Torah. The emphasis was about prosperity. The emphasis was about influence in the house of God. So in that day and time, there were two high priests. One was a political high priest, one was a religious high priest. So Jesus was born for 30 years. No prophet rose. The discernment was wrong. Perhaps many young people were, were supposed to carry that ordination. You know, when ordination comes into the spirit realm, it floats in the atmosphere. The man that can discern it and pick it begins to walk in it. But nobody could pick it. Only John separated himself into the wilderness and something alighted upon him. Meanwhile, the Jesus John was about to announce, the Jesus, the day he was born, eight days later, they brought him to the temple and a prophet said, this is the salvation of Israel. Two people had already recognized him, but the generation could not know him. After 30 years, the man that God drew into the wilderness by body was the only man that came and said, the Messiah is among us. And when he saw Jesus come, he said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. This is a time when they were still slaughtering bulls and havers and carrying the blood into the, the, the Holy of Holies and pouring on the mercy seat. But somebody else saw, he said, no, behold, the Lamb of God. 
You know, if you were one of the high priests at that time, you will challenge him. And actually they challenge him. They say, who are you? By what authority are you doing what you are doing? Because the system has become an institution. It is no longer an, an infrastructure from heaven that could trap the dimensions of God. God had been separated from that system. So for you in that day and time to have a voice, the same way they accredit universities now, the Sanhedrin will delegate people to come and say, okay, now you know the Torah, so preach. Here comes a man from the back sides of the desert and he said, the Lamb of God has come. Many people in that generation had the same body. So the Bible said the whole of Judea went to him. So John was not the only one with a body. The body was hovering in the atmosphere, but there was no man of sufficient discernment. Only a man was able to download what was coming from heaven. And instantly, heaven made his voice a trumpet. It was on the economy of his voice that the Messiah came into the territory. When God raises an army, he begins to cast bodies in the hearts of people. This is why most of you will find it difficult to sleep at night. You may go to church every Sunday, people are dancing, but it looks as if you are alien. They are prophesying prosperity. You are not against, you are not an agent of poverty. Poverty in itself is a cause. You are not an agent of poverty. But what is resonating in your soul, even though they are screaming and people are jumping, they can't touch you. What you need to know is that you are not part of that generation. You are supposed to be a herald of what God wants to bring into that generation. That is why you are hearing differently. And if you are wise, you will know that your calling at that time is to separate and attend to that body. Because if you don't attend to that body, you may not be relevant. It is on this wise that I want to begin to define what a calling is. A calling is not a prophet or an apostle. A calling is not even necessarily an assignment. A calling is actually heaven's strategy of making you become everything you should be in a kingdom if the fall had not taken place. If you don't understand this, you may be carried away that you are an apostle. If you don't understand this, you may be carried away that you are a prophet. If you don't understand this, you may be carried away that you are a millionaire. But every time God places a calling on a man, and you need to know that all of us have different callings. But every calling God places on our lives is his own strategy of making us become everything we would have been if the fall had not taken place. If not for the fall, every one of us would have been born into what we are supposed to be. Because the way Adam was crafted, Adam was not crafted to do something to become. He was created as a man who was already in his full ordination. In fact, the idea of Eden was for Eden to be an atmosphere of heaven through which heaven can dominate the earth until the earth becomes a mirror image of heaven. The reason the new Jerusalem will descend from heaven is because the first Jerusalem that God was creating on earth for man to cultivate was lost. So that Jerusalem is what we descend back in the book of Revelation. So if the fall had not taken place, you wouldn't have needed a prophet. You wouldn't have needed an apostle. You would have been born into who you are supposed to be in Zion. But right now the fall had taken place. There is a contradiction in the spirit realm. And of necessity, everything that God planned in his heart will come to pass. So you are now born into a world of chaos. You are now born into a world of commotion. You are now dislocated because even your fathers that gave birth to you, some of them didn't know God. And the ones that gave birth to them, most of them didn't know God. So you were supposed to be born to function in the kingdom as an entity. But unfortunately, you were born into an idol family. So the only way God can abstract you and bring you back on track is to put a calling upon your life. So on earth, you may be fulfilling the calling of a prophet. But at the end of the day, when you are done on earth, you go to heaven, they will not know you as a prophet. When you go to heaven, you will be recognized as who you were before the foundation of the world, if your calling is accurate. So the idea of a calling is heaven's strategy of giving humankind an advantage, of subduing the earth, and to come to a point where everything they were created to be, they will become in eternity. This is the idea behind the reward system of heaven. But you see, 
there is another infrastructure on earth that supports the calling. It's called the blessing. If you are not careful, you will live your life on earth pursuing the blessing as against the calling. The blessing is everything God gives you as an advantage in time. But the idea of the blessing is to facilitate the calling. But most of the times, what the church preaches now is the blessing. So the blessedness of the anointing, the blessedness of healing, the blessedness of prosperity becomes the priority. So we live on earth as if life begins and ends on earth. Meanwhile, the anointing is supposed to make you have an advantage so that you can subdue the earth. And in subduing the earth, you become like God and then you walk into the fullness of your ordination. The prosperity you have is a tool in your hand for you to advance that which is in the heart of God to the degree that you will carry out the same responsibility you would have carried out in Zion if the earth had not collapsed. So that you are doing that assignment. When Zion is restored, then you will stand in your rank. But unfortunately, the way we are going now, many people are forfeiting their rank in Zion for prosperity and for pleasure in time. So the Bible said, him that liveth in pleasure is dead while he walketh. Is anything wrong with the blessing? No. But the blessing will be relevant if you have the calling in view. The anointing of the prophetic can become the reason why you will lose your place in Zion. These things are delicate matters. And if they are not explained carefully, it will be a challenge. So somebody has an anointing and he thinks that anointing is expected to make him. Because he read in the Bible and he said, A man's give maketh room for him and bringeth him before kings. But the question is, what did you come before kings to do? Because Paul the apostle came before king to bring a witness that would cost him his life. So Paul's gift brought him what? Death before kings. But the idea is because he saw that the mark of the high calling, when it is met, there is a reward in what? In Zion. So the reason he was pursuing and advancing the office of an apostle was not for the apostolic itself. It was for the word, the reward that is in Zion. Because he knows that there is a throne that is meant for him before he was born. Everything about the apostolic was to give him an advantage in time. So that by the time he gets to eternity, by all means, he will sit on that throne. Judas Iscariot, on the other hand, did not understand what it meant. So he thought working with Jesus was about fraternity. He thought it was about influence. So when they come, they say the twelfth. So Jesus will stand and then the twelve. And then he was keeping the bag of the bunny. So it's, it's good to walk with Jesus. You know, sometimes the Bible says he took from it. The blessing. <laughs> but the blessing made him become the son of perdition. Meanwhile, when God, when Jesus, the immortal spirit, was explaining the reason for the twelve, he said, the twelve of you will sit with me on twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. So the reason Peter is an apostle is not for the apostleship. There is a throne in heaven for Peter. It is possible for Peter to walk on earth and lose contact and sight of the throne that is in Zion. So everything becomes about earth. Everything becomes, so you play two at a point. The point when the anointing now rests becomes your destination. So every time you come for a meeting, Apostle Peter shows up. So he talks, talks, he waves his hand like this, people fall down. And then he keeps quiet for three minutes. He comes to this other angle, he waves his hand like this, people fall down. And then they come and put the seed at the Apostle's feet. <laughs> they call it. <sighs> if you go to church now and you ask people, You'll be amazed that many people have not received signal from Zion since this year began. Many. They have not received any signal from Zion. Meanwhile, all of us are sowing seeds. And the pastor is so interested in those who are sowing seeds. In fact, those ones, if they call around 1 a.m., the pastor can drive there. But the intercessor, even if he's dying, at best they will send delegates. They will send maybe the prayer band leader or the assistant pastor to go and greet the intercessor. And they are hoping that when he wake up, he will come back. But the source of consolation, they sit on the first row. Because we only know about the blessing. The calling is not in view. 
Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai. The word blessing means to cause to prosper. That's what the word blessing means. To cause a thing to prosper. But the question is, what are you prospering in? So the blessing is supposed to be a tool that facilitates the reason why you are here. There are many systems in the kingdom. I want to pick one system and use it to explain what I'm talking about. You know, I know we are people of fire. Fire is not a challenge. If I finish talking and I tell you to take bike and bring fire in five minutes, fire can come. Since we have known the gate of power, we now decide to look for things that have immortal relevance. Because it's possible to open 1,000 blind eyes. And then when you appear in eternity, you see yourself with the devil. And they say, why didn't you cooperate with me on earth? Paul say he's afraid that after having saved others, himself will be a castaway. So I say, okay, so it's possible to be running as, a, as an apostle and doing the work of an apostle and then you yourself will be a castaway. That means everything Paul was doing, his consciousness was about eternity. You are the one who is so conscious about the anointing. You, know? you came for a meeting, you are conscious about the move of power. Ooh, you have told people to gather so high people have not fallen. You are doing... You may even resort to psychology. But in the days of Paul, he could teach the Bible till midnight. And because what the Holy Ghost said, do that day is teach Bible. Even though it was announced to be a healing meeting, his connection is with Zion. So if the Holy Ghost doesn't say, heal the sick, even though it's good to heal the sick, he will stop. Paul was so zealous. He said he was going to Bithynia, but the Holy Ghost forbade him, so he stopped. See the way we are going everywhere now. Is it good to do evangelism? Yes. Who is the king of evangelism? The Holy Spirit. But Paul was going to where? Bithynia. And he said the Holy Ghost did what? He forbade him. So he shut down. And then when he went to sleep, he now saw a man from Macedonia say, come to Macedonia. And then he began to move. So the reason he stopped is not because his Z had died. Everything he was doing, he was connecting to the command power of heaven. Because at the end of the day, he knows that what he's doing in time is not what will make him relevant. It is the assessment from heaven that we count. As far as he was concerned, everything he was doing was a tool of Zion to give him an advantage in heaven. In the new Jerusalem, where he will stand was his priority. But unfortunately, these things are no longer emphasis in the kingdom. You will be shocked now that even we that are praying here, if we ask ourselves what is our greatest motivation, you will be amazed. You will be amazed. You will say, I love God, I love God. Until God begins to make demands. That's when you will know the extent to which you love Him. When God makes demand on your sleep, as simple as it is, then you will discover that love in the spirit realm is not emotion based. It's obedience based. And then you will discover that even though you say you love God a thousand times, you don't love him. And you may psych yourself like that until you leave this world. When you go to eternity, then you'll be shocked that the standards of heaven are different from what men told you. Let me pick the system of faith and explain what I'm talking about. Then I can jack it up. At that time, I know that even if you go to sleep, it will echo in your head. It will echo in your head. What is my calling? And now, when you are praying to God for your calling, you will know it's not about influence. You will know it's not about announcement. You know it's not about fame. Now that God wants to raise men, the devil comes and is motivating a lot of young people. Because the devil is a king of mimicking what God wants to do. So there are many people hustling on Facebook and on Instagram to become popular. But the idea of the calling is not popularity. It's far from it. The idea of the calling is not power. It's not influence. The idea of the calling is what you will become in the world to come. Because what the devil came to do was to scatter the puzzle that God created. 
before we were ever created, the same way the heavens were designed. You know, when God created the heavens, every entity is in its rank. You will never read in the Bible when they say somebody was promoted. The only being that wanted to create promotion in heaven was the one they cast away. Because the order is set in such a rigid, rigid fashion that everybody is in his own rank. So the angels don't gain promotion. Before, if you were among the 20 and 4 elders, be dear. If you are a small angel, be dear. That's how it was designed. The same pattern was what God put in place for the earth. So the devil came and scattered the sequence. Because when the order is distorted, then possibility of rebellion can exist and God can no longer be the sovereign. So what God is trying to do with all of the puzzle that is going on in this world is to reestablish what he had in mind before the foundation of the world. And maybe you and I, your place may be to sit on a throne. But you see, if you don't take advantage of the gate of your calling, so that at the end of your race on earth, you will make it to that throne, you'll be surprised that there are many other vacancies. Like the throne of Judah became vacant. And then they casted Lot and said, Matthias has come. May your throne not be bargained. <laughs> Higher matters in the kingdom are, they play with it. They play with it. Higher matters. May your place not be lost because they taught you only about the blessing. And you were running to make it in time. Paul said reward is in heaven. That means the possibility of reward does not exist in time. God can bless you in time. But Paul said reward is what? It's in heaven. The crown of life is not on earth. It's in heaven. Every other thing God does on time, in time, is to further strengthen you to do more. That means the mark you have not attained yet. So you were praying for two hours. Every day, God brought body and you increase it to four hours. And as you started praying for four hours, God now gathered some people around you. And then they began to sow seeds to you. And then you'll be shocked that every seed that came to you, God now says, sow it out. Maybe for you to be able to enter into the height you should operate in the spirit, is for you to sustain a quota of 10 hours of prayer every day. But your strength can't carry it. So God wants to augment with seed sowing. So the reason he added money into what is happening is not because God wants you now to begin to drive in a Lamborghini. That's why when the money came, you know, I was preaching. For six years, every honorarium that came to my hand, God said I should give it out. Meanwhile, some of the meetings we went for, we borrowed transport fare. How do I now pay the transport fare? I didn't know that maybe my obedience to the dealings of the Holy Ghost was not enough. So God was looking for many strategies to argument. Every man of God I saw then, everything I just empty, I just empty, I just empty money. And then as if that is not enough, all that strange dealings began to come. God will now take me to go and serve somebody that even before I went, I knew there is no possibility of profit in it. And then I will serve the person for three months or four months, and then I will be discharged. And today, God is giving us a tiny voice to speak. And if you are not careful, you now say, Car, something is happening now. So, first, you begin with packaging. You now said, the kind of suit we should wear now, there's a way it should appear because of where we are now. You are nowhere, you are still on earth. <laughs> you now say, Kai, 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 as I'm going to the ministration now, somebody should hold my Bible. And then, <laughs> you, you, it's about creating impression among men now. Meanwhile, where your ordination is, is in heaven. So the angels are looking at you. What is he doing? The guy have only climbed two ladders. There are 30 more ladders. What is he doing? <laughs> That's why I became careful. Because people here heard my messages. People from everywhere. Daddy, daddy, I want to submit to you. I said, I'm not yet a father. <laughs> I'm not. After all, if, I, if God gave me a pioneering work, I would have said, okay, I must have to shepherd people. I, I'm not pioneering a walk. You are calling me Papa. I'm not yet a father. The last time I checked, I was still a disciple. And I'm still in serious training. The blessing is to advance the calling. 
and the calling is heaven's strategy of making you retain your place in eternity because what you don't know is that earth is a ground of warfare and the warfare is not primarily about your money it's not even about your health so to say the warfare is about your soul because the moment your soul is disaligned what happens is that you begin to journey away from what was written concerning you before the foundation of the world he came to jeremiah he said before you were conceived in your mother's womb i knew you i knew you is different from i ordained you to be a prophet he didn't say i knew you to be a prophet before you were conceived in your mother's womb i knew you in me there's a place you are in me but in time you must be a prophet to get there that is why when all of us leave the earth all of the titles are removed we are called overcomers because what it means is that we have battled through the warfare of time and we have succeeded in aligning with what was written concerning us because what was written concerning us in zion is consistent with what is in the heart of the father so jesus said i will give you a new name that no man knows he said they that overcome i will plant in the house of my father as a tree of eternity forever a tree of life forever so who you are is not yet disclosed it is what you do with your calling and overcome in time that will determine who you will be in the world to come so paul said even the salvation we have in time he said we should walk it with fear and trembling before you were born i knew you we don't know what he knew him to be but he served on earth as a prophet when he gets to heaven he will know what he is known to be let me show you the system of faith so you understand what i'm talking about better in hebrews chapter 11. the way things are going now i discovered sometimes especially when we have the opportunity like this it shouldn't be fire 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 let's sit down and and look at certain things that we form conviction because god may be dealing with you in a certain way and then you just came to church and they told you if you are not prospering you are cursed meanwhile their idea of prosperity is, is the volume of your account of money in your account so you begin to wonder what jesus saw in the life of john when he said of all men born of a woman there's none greater than john so in that generation nobody was more prosperous than john and the idea is not poverty remember i said that from the beginning the idea is what the degree to which you are fulfilling your work your ordination as far as heaven was concerned at that time the goal of of john the baptist was to be the voice of one crying in the wilderness the strategy was to identify the messiah by baptism he did all of it so even though the bible say paul uh, john did no miracles jesus came and said of all men born of a woman the last time i checked even abraham was born of a woman maybe when we go to heaven they will explain that one to us better but jesus said what well, of all men born of a woman because when they checked the lexicon of zion the duty of the guy was to be a voice crying in the wilderness and his assignment was to be able to eat so long as he is able every assignment god gives you is a basis for him to justify to be justified in rewarding you in eternity because on account of the fall we are dislocated in time if god now comes in eternity and say you will be this you sit here you sit here you may say he's unjust so he gives all of us an equal an equal ground by grace so that on account of it we will fulfill the assignment that he has given to us and on the strength of our fulfilling that assignment every reward we receive in eternity is legitimate did you read the story of the people god called to walk in the vineyard he invited them at different hour but he gave all of them the same reward and then the ones that came in the morning were complaining he said what i bargained with you is what i gave you and i gave you because you fulfilled your what your assignment the ones i called at the last hour they also fulfilled their own assignment so i gave them what was bargained so every calling on a man's life is god's excuse of rewarding him in eternity if you judge calling based on manifestation in time you have lost the idea behind the whole thing this is why a lot of people lose their focus while they are still working in time at some point they assume they have become big so it's about building systems if they call hundred people will gather 
if they say they have a need, people will run to come and drop their last savings. So at that time now, they are creative. Anything they think about, they do. And they don't know when it becomes about time. So we build monuments. Instead of raising immortal foundations that will be memorials in heaven. If you don't know what your assignment is, it means something is wrong with your discernment. And the reason your discernment will remain wrong is because you have not managed burdens correctly. When you begin to manage burdens correctly, your discernment is quickened. And then you begin to find out why you came. And then the strategy of life is given to you. Because the reason you are living is not about this realm anymore. This realm is already sentenced to destruction. We are here because it's a tool, it's a platform for us to invest in eternity. True investment is not really in time. True investment is in eternity. And you begin by investing your life. This is why everyone has a calling upon his life. It is God's strategy of giving him a place in Zion. But most of us, our callings may become the reason why we lose out. God may place a calling in the heart of somebody to be a sponsor of the kingdom. And on the strength of that calling, that person has so much understanding and wisdom about business. Anything he touches becomes gold. And then all of a sudden he becomes a millionaire. And then he thinks life is now pleasure. And when he goes to the house of God where echoes will be fired into his soul to realize that his own part in the kingdom is to advance the kingdom by finances. He comes to the church and they make him feel like a demigod. So he gives a portion of what he has for the pastor to keep honoring him. So the more he stays in church, the more he becomes a creator of time. And he will live in this world for many years. And when the verdict of heaven is passed, like it was said in Luke chapter 12 verse 20, God will say, you fool. Because he doesn't understand why the money came in the first place. Somebody may be an intercessor. And the only burden that God puts on his heart is prayer. But when he went to church from January to September, the pastor kept talking about how that the standard of God's blessing is that he will prosper in this world. So the guy abandons his intercessory assignment and he begins to do forest. When he does forest for six years and he gets 10 million, then the whole thing will vanish into the wind. Then after he vanishes, he now goes to sit down quietly for some time. Then he will hear the echo of eternity. Prayer, prayer, prayer. He will now go back. What he doesn't know is that 10 years was wasted. So in the equation of his life, 10 years will be vacant. When they take the radar of heaven, 10 years didn't exist. Because that part of him was not reaching. The only way now he can maximize life is to do more than he should have done before. So that he can cover for the year that the canker worm and the caterpillar worm have eaten. God told me something. He said to me, he said, The dimension of my presence that you will touch. He said you will labor more than you should have labored before. Because you allow your soul to experience iniquity. As a boy of seven years, I was seeing visions like a screen on the wall. My word of knowledge then was not, God is telling you something. Everything I will watch it like a screen. And with my naked eye, not my eyes or the spirit. I didn't know anything about vision. I laid down with my mom. At least the ones I'm permitted to share. And then the heaven, the cloud shifted. And I saw a man sat on a throne with a cloud. And a woman was presenting a child. And I tapped my mom to look, look, and he vanished. And that's how I kept seeing visions. Kept seeing visions. If things want to happen, I will tell you. Or if something is happening... This is more than a javu because I can narrate it for one hour. I will tell you this, 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 how it's happening. I will narrate the whole thing if you come to pass like that. As a boy of nine years, I went to my dad. I told him, if you don't change your ways, you will be the architect of your misfortune. And then he stood like this. Oh, the life left his body. <laughs> that was how crazy I was at nine years. But a point came when I exposed my soul to iniquity. So God told me, he said, those dimensions are not lost. But before you walk in it again, you will do many more times than you would have done. So the things I'm supposed to enter, maybe by one hour prayer now, I will pray for three hours before it happens. That is how the devil steals people's years on earth. 
So the intercessor goes to church and they told him it's money, money, money. So he abandons his altar until everything there becomes a ash or ashes. And then when he trains some Bitcoin for five years, if God wants to help him, then God will touch that Bitcoin company with his finger and the company will crash. When that company crashed, then his soul becomes lonely. He's now looking for something that is deeper than everything that a man is talking about. Only a spirit can talk to him at that time. And that time of, disp of, of desperation, then he hears a whisper to activate the altar. And this time around, the altar that he would have raised in Lagos, he will be forced to raise it in Osuka. <laughs> Elohim Adonai. <laughs> you know, you know one thing about the apostolic ministry is that your message is the story of your life. So God brings you dealings, He shapes you, He breaks you until every time you stand, you are a witness of heaven. You can come to a territory and you didn't even preach, but your presence there can become a witness because your life is a mobile altar. It's the things you have gone through. That's why we don't run from dealings and processes. But that is what is obliterated from the teaching in the house of God today. Because we don't know the weight of callings. I went to the university. I say I was a man of God. But suddenly I became a politician. So when those guys eat money and they don't know what to say, they come and call the orator. And then I will come and stand and pocket my hand. And I will lower my voice. And then I will quote three philosophers. When they can't hear me, they will not say, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. When they keep quiet, they will say, Aluta continua. <laughs> you will make your voice deep. And you say, George Washington once said, discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small number formidable. It procures success to the weak and esteem to all. Then they will hear, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I didn't know that this tongue was supposed to be the bearer of the oracles of God. But because people were clapping, I became an orator, a political orator for a season. You have lost track of calling. So a Deborah, a Deborah, a Deborah, she has authority among men. She thinks it's because she's tall. So every time she wants to go out, she wears some kind of clothes and look. She thinks she's a gallant woman. That's why men fear her. She doesn't know it's a mantle that is rotating over her head in the spirit realm. Because the Deborah is a judge. It's the spirit of a judge, a warrior woman that can rule in the midst of men. She feels about stature. So she's now walking on her stature. Even her walking. Then the devil steals the calling. The idea of the calling is lost. Life doesn't begin in time. It begins in eternity. Time is a, is a ticket to invest there. The system of faith. Let's look at the system of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. The problem with this kind of talk is you will waste all the time. You will not know. Meanwhile, tomorrow we will, we will have liberty. At least tomorrow should be the moment of glory. Tomorrow we will have moments of... We will, all of us will fly. Mm, tomorrow will be a night where we will be sucked in God's presence. And power. Because there are many activations that will take place tomorrow. Many activations. Most of you, your calling is buried in your appetite. The only thing God will use to excavate it are bodies. So bodies will be cast on people. And callings will be activated. Your appetite is, is, is sleep. So your, the grave of your calling is your, is your bed. Oh. For six months, God is saying, wake up, wake up, wake up. Even if an angel comes and jack you like this, you will wake up and then you say, Kai, you go and drink cold water, you come back and sleep. You say, how did I go to, I was so thirsty when I went to sleep. I should have drank water. <laughs> it's only the language of a spirit that can touch you now. <laughs> that God may help us to hear the whispers of eternity. When men begin to hear from eternity, it alters their lives. It changes their priorities. I was looking at John. You see, there are some characters that I, I like to keep talking about. Because there is something that needs to sink into this generation. 
How can somebody leave the comfort of his father's house? Meanwhile, this man was born into a family that had need for a child until the mother was in her old age before God blessed them with a child. But that child came into this world with an understanding of calling. So the moment he came of age, he ran into the wilderness. I was wondering, what happened to Elizabeth? I can imagine many days when she was crying. And telling John, why can't you be a priest like your father? Is your father not serving God? And then the Bible said, the guy fed on locusts and white honey. And he was dressed only in camel skin. What kind of life is that? What he is perceiving is what our generation can perceive. There is something that guy heard. You know, when you read the story of Moses from Exodus, you will just think that Moses felt angry that they are punishing the Israelites. Until Paul came and told us what happened. He said it's because Moses saw him that was invincible. That is why he was able to choose to suffer affliction with the people of God and the pleasures of Egypt. He saw something from Zion. You have not seen yourself in Zion. If you see the truth you are supposed to occupy that you are mortgaging for pleasure in time and for security on earth, you will discover that you have wasted yourself. The Bible says Paul and Barnabas. He said, this be the men that hazarded their lives for the gospel. I was wondering, why was Paul doing what he was doing until when he was about to round up ministry? He now said there is a crown in heaven that he was seeing. So the reason why Paul will be the only apostle that goes to Meduguri and stand up for Meduguri, the next thing is going to Afghanistan, was because he saw a crown. That crown was motivating him. So people would think, hey, Apostle Paul, he went to a city, they say, the gods have come among us. They began to clap and he, they tore their clothes quickly and pour ashes on their head. Because they were about to rob them of the crown that he saw in the spirit realm. What he saw in heaven, they wanted to give him on earth. Meanwhile, that crown doesn't exist on earth. They want to create a mundane crown and put upon his head. The guy quickly poured ashes on himself. God, please, uh, it's heaven. I'm seeing heaven. What I'm seeing is the gate of Zion. Men came and said, Hey, the gods. Those days when we were, uh, I won't call the name of the church. If you want to give, you will not give in secret. You will wait. Until when everybody gather, then you stand up and say, um, You will talk very humbly. <laughs> I say, Pastor, I thank God for what He's doing. I want to sow a seed of 50,000. Hey! Then they will say, Son of consolation. Pastor will now use you as the message. Say, Look at you, look at you. He's just a youth copper. He's giving 50,000. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? He has just bought his first car. So either they bloat your ego. Or they promise you things that are time based. But when the elders gave, they gave because they saw something in the spirit. Why was Abraham able to give until he gave Isaac? He saw, he saw, he saw the name of God that he called <laughs> on the mountain. God is seen. Jehovah is seen on the mountain. So his sight penetrated beyond time into eternity. What he saw made it possible for him to give his best. Zion, Zion. But the doctrine we hear now have cut us off from Zion. So we do everything for the glories of time. Meanwhile, time itself is corruption. Everything here is sentenced to doom and destruction. But this is what we live for. We don't know the calling. Let me show you something. In Hebrews chapter 11. <laughs> He began this scripture by telling us how that faith is actually a tool for rotting exploit. That means everything that is spectacular in this world is created by faith. Faith is the power of God to create manifestations, tangible and supernatural influences in time. So he didn't undermine the power of faith to move the hand of God and to create impact. But concerning the elders, he said, faith for them was not the impact that they wrought. He said, through faith, he said, the elders obtained the good report. Because for the elders, it was about what will be said concerning them when they get toward to Zion. A good report 
was the value that the elders attached to faith. Even though the Bible said the foundations of the earth, it said the earth is gathered together by faith. It said through faith, everything that was created was created by it. He said, but as touching the elders, faith had a different definition. Faith as a substance could be a tool for wrecking and, and creating impact. But when it comes to the believer, he has a different definition. So the believer can, it's just like money in the hands of a believer. Money in the hands of a riotous person can be a tool of pleasure. But money in the hands of a believer is a trust fund. So when you are defining money, the context in which you find money is what will determine the value of that money. So a believer with a million naira is not carrying a tool to meet his need. The kingdom will advance another leap because he has a million. So what you call money in the hands of a believer is a different economy altogether. Faith is a tool of exploit. But he said concerning the fathers, it was the only basis of obtaining a good report. Because these guys know that earth is falling and there is no life on this side anymore. What they have now is a ticket into Zion. Because it is in Zion that men will be enthroned. So the Bible said, without faith. Let me read it. So that I don't jump. He said, through faith we understand that the walls were frayed by the word of God. So everything you see in creation is an offspring of faith. He doesn't deny the fact that faith can, come, can create impact. He said, the walls were frayed by the word of God so that the things which are were not made out of the things we do appear. But in verse 2, before he told you about the impact of faith, he said, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. So he came back and he began to talk to us about the elders. So what made those guys elders and what gave them a good report was what? Because of what they did with that economy called faith. Meanwhile, the word elder used in that scripture is the word presbyteros. That's where the word presbytery was gotten from. So these guys, they became council members in the new Jerusalem. Because of what they did with faith, they have become the people that will determine what will happen in the world to come. So they are called the council member of the next world because they know what to do with faith. Meanwhile, it's possible for you to carry faith and faith for you is all about signs and wonders. And the motivation for signs and wonders is not because God wants to advance the kingdom in the life of a man. It's because you have entered a dimension. I'm telling you things that I've suffered from and God is still delivering us. So I'm not preaching the gospel to you because I read it. I'm telling you about intrinsic dynamics. And if you are honest with yourself, you will know. Even those of you who are singers, because you sing now and two people fall under the power. Your goal now is to make people fall because you are gaining influence in the fellowship. So it's not even about the kingdom of God being advanced in the life of people anymore. It is now a show. And every time you come, it's no longer about what God is doing part time. People must have to fall down because if they don't fall, your reputation is at stake. So even if the Holy Ghost come and say, Kai, Kai, Kai is a lie, people must so your, your goal is not to receive a good report in Zion. Your goal is what? Manifestation. But the Bible said through faith beyond manifestation, the elders obtained a good report. So he began to show us how these guys became the Sanhedrin of the New Jerusalem. You know that these guys were, were doing political and seasonal dispensational Sanhedrin. So they gathered people because they understood the Torah and the way. Meanwhile, there were some people that were transacting with a deeper economy. So they were not Sanhedrin's in the synagogue of Jerusalem. They are Sanhedrin's in what? The new Jerusalem. Because through faith they did what? They obtained the good report. So he said they are elders. The word elders is the word the presbytery. So politically in your generation, they can call you and say, come and be part of the, of the leadership in Khan. Because the can of their day was the Sanhedrin. But there were some people that were not recognized in the synagogue. But in the New Jerusalem, the Bible said they were what? The elders. That's why I told you that calling is not first of all given to you for impact in time. 
calling is given to you to be able to enter into what you should be in the world to come. In the world to come, most of us here are supposed to be patriarchs. But can you follow God enough to pioneer a dimension in the spirit? Because these men are not just called elders because they came first. So the Bible did not begin this lexicon with Adam. It began with Abel. Meanwhile, Adam is the first man. So if it's about age, Adam would have been the first. If it's about who came first, Adam would have been the first. But these men entered into an economy in the spirit. And because of what they touched in the world to come, they are fathers. They will form the council of that world that God himself will give credit to. Jesus made a striking statement in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 11. He said, men shall come from the east and from the west to sit with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the new Jerusalem. That means there is something a man can do in this world that will make him have so much stature that in heaven, even men that live on earth with him will come to sit under their ambience. What is that economy that a man enters? It is the calling of God upon his life. You will do something so much that in heaven, you will not only have a throne, a dispensation of people will be committed to you because of what you did in time. He said, true faith, the elders, the presbytery, obtain a good report. And he began to show us the presbytery. So, presbytership in this context is not that we are the elders in the church now. The council that was formed there, eh? somebody lived 100 years ago, then the second person that is in that council lived 100 years later. Because that council is, council is not time-based. So you will be shocked that if you fulfill your calling, when you go to heaven, you will sit with Enoch on the round table. You know why? You walk in the same dimension in God that he walked. The only thing is that you people are to sustain that dimension in different generations. So he is not superior to you because his generation came first. The problem is to what degree did you walk in your calling? So you will go to heaven and you will be amazed that you will sit with men like Paul the Apostle. And then you ask yourself, how is this possible? Then God will tell you that what Paul represented in his generation is what you represent in your own generation. But unfortunately, there are many Pauls in this generation that may never discern that they are Paul. So in this generation, they will live a life of a vagabond. So when they go to heaven, God will tell them that the, the operation of the spirit that was upon the life of Paul was meant for every generation. Hope you know that the same remnant that God told the prophet Elijah that is in Israel, many years later, Paul came writing in Hebrews and he said, there is not a generation that is without a remnant. That means the idea of a remnant was not an existence in the day of Elijah. The idea of a remnant is a strategy of heaven for preserving every generation. Meanwhile, somebody can be a part of the remnant and then God is bringing a dealing upon his life and he violates that dealing because the current trend is prosperity. And he doesn't know that the remnant are a people that refuse to bow to status quo. The remnant are a people that refuse the way of idolatry. The remnant are a people that choose to stand with God even if they will be slain in the process. Because they are the witness that the service and the worship of God is the most substantial reality that a generation should hold. The same Elijah that lived many years before, when John came, the Bible said he was what? He was coming in the spirit and in the power of Elias. So in the new Jerusalem, you will be shocked that John will have the same rank as Elijah. Because the same way Elijah fulfilled his calling, John also fulfilled his calling. And when Jesus came, he brought testament to the fact that John accomplished his work in time. You are an apostle, you are a prophet, and you think it's about title. Maybe if the vent of the new Jerusalem is open, then you will realize that you are the Elijah of this generation. And the reason nobody can rise to challenge the kings anymore is because the people that should walk in the calling of Elijah, they have forgotten and abandoned those calling. So why the church is crying for God to raise men, the Elijahs are not aware. Even the ones that know they are prophets, they think that the prophetic is all about names. It's all about of title. Meanwhile, 
a generation is suffering because they have not understood the scope of ordination. So in heaven, the same way that Michael has his own quadrant, Lucifer has his own quadrant, every dimension of God that is a calling has a quadrant. There are those that will sit with Abraham. There are those that will sit with Enoch. There are those that will sit with all of this presbytery. But the question is, have you identified that calling and you are able to give your life to it? Because it is not about time. Life is not necessarily a reality of time. We walk through time to invest in Zion. But you may not be aware that what is troubling your heart, the reason there is nothing in, the, in, in, in this realm that can satisfy it is because what is troubling your heart is a reality that dwells in heaven. So God is calling you into a death that will bring you into eternal relevance. Meanwhile, you are strategizing and planning your life to be relevant in time. Who told you you are a creator of time? Say through faith, the elders obtain a good report. What is your own as what is your own standing in Zion? What is your calling? If you find your calling correctly, and you check the Bible and check the spirit realm, you will discover that you are connected to an ancestry of a people that have walked in the same dimension. Because there is a place for those tribes in Zion. Hope you know as large as Israel was, the Bible said they were encamped according to their tribe. The three million, four million people were not just moving around. There was a pattern for the assembly. Everyone was camped according to his own tribe. Because Israel is a reflection of the, of the reality and the civilization of Zion. But you don't know that the calling that is upon your life is what was the tribe of an entity that have existed a thousand years before you came. Why do you think Paul, John was the way he was? He was the way he was because he knew that he was a carrier of the spirit of Elijah. He knew his tribe in the spirit. He knew his own quadrant in Zion. So on earth, his life is sentenced to that order of living. Most of you here, the hand of God upon your life is for intercession. The hand of God upon your life is to find a clan, to stand and to bet what God wants to do. But you want to marry a fair woman. <laughs> the hand of God upon your life is for you to be a sponsor of the kingdom but you want to live in Dubai your honeymoon must be on the Caribbean islands you don't know the ambitions that we had until we understood kingdom see every day we are dying if I tell you the specification of the, the lady I had in mind for the age of 15 <laughs> I used to tell my sister that if my wife come here, all of you will worship her. In fact, when I did my census correctly, the only people that were close were Indian ladies. Because I first of all begin by describing her fingernails. <laughs> the fingernails, that's where you begin from. We are not talking about the, the face or the shape yet. The thing, let's start with fingernails. If she's holding her phone like this, until kingdom came and killed us. Those days, oh, we had no dime, oh, but in our mind, what was there? You couldn't take it away. And God knew that until that thing breaks, you can't amount to anything. The cars that we said we will drive. <laughs> he said, but true faith, the elders. Now money comes to your hand, but money has no value to you anymore. Because you are perceiving something. You come to a place, people are calling your name. You are the first person bending down. You didn't even remember you are the one they are talking about. <laughs> because you have seen something and you have judged time. So Paul said we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. 
rejoicing in Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. Through faith, the elders obtained a good report. Let me show you how a spirit judges a report. I will just talk about two of them quickly. And then we will pray for a few minutes. A few minutes. The Bible says, through faith, we understand. Okay, let me start with from verse 4. It says, by faith. You will notice, one thing you will notice from this scripture, when you begin to read it, you will discover that more than 90% of the people here, what the Bible called their faith was the ability to give to God, not to receive. When you read this scripture, the few people that received here, that made it to this list, were people like Sarah. And what she received was not her own. It was a seed that God wanted to use in the kingdom. He said, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And he said, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift and by it, even being dead, Yet speak it. So when God came to evaluate the life of Abel, the value of Abel, first of all, was beyond time. So even after Abel died, Abel was able to summon the courts of heaven by another kind of utterance that was deeper than what his voice can communicate. It was a best life that revealed to us that even blood can speak in the spirit realm. It is because of Abel, the path that Abel created, that became the basis for the substitutionary death of Jesus to be possible. That's why they are called elders. They are patriarchs. They bent dimensions in God that were not possible. The only way you know that atonement, atonement is possible by blood, and blood has an utterance, that can create justice in the spirit was because a man understood how to give an excellent offering. So the speakings of Abel's blood became a dimension in the spirit. So even Jesus, when he came to save humankind, it was by the utterance of the blood. So the Bible said Jesus ascended to heaven and he presented his blood in the holy tabernacles because a man pioneered it. How did he enter into this kind of understanding? And how did he become so relevant that even when he was dead, the Bible said his, his blood was petitioning heaven. They knew how to live beyond time. Everything God gives to them, including the blessings and the assignment, was designed to give them relevance in Zion. So such men, even if you slaughter them, you cannot kill them. Their dynasty, it travels forever. Their dispensation is for ageless aeons. You can't shut their voice. When you kill that man in Meduguri, what is upon his life will rest on somebody else in Zimbabwe. He will remain on earth as a witness. So long as he tapped into that dimension, he has become a coronated man in heaven. Abel's blood was able to summon the courts of heaven until God showed up and began to petition another man on earth because the man who died even though on earth he was dead he had a stake in heaven how is it possible for a man to live on earth yet have a stake in Zion because he understood how to live a way of death because that is what the calling demands he said while he was dead his blood was talking God himself showed up and said Cain, Cain, where is thy brother? Cain thought it was Elohim that was coming to have fellowship. So he spoke out of context. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, ah, ah, the blood of thy brother is crying from the ground. He didn't know that Abel was an influential person in heaven. When Cain was doing politics on earth, Abel was doing his own politics in heaven. Because by his calling, he was appealing and appeasing the heart of the father. Every time the father had a need, Abel committed his life. He showed us the way of sacrifice as the only basis of living accurately on earth. So when he died, heaven could not rest because one of the princes of heaven had returned and he came to heaven with a lamentation. When a prince showed up, the king had no choice but to move. 
So heaven moved on his account. Because that one is what? It's an elder. They are council members. But he entered into that pathway by what? Offering a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It was Abel that taught us how service is done in the kingdom. The way of sacrifice. Meanwhile, we are in a church now where everything we hear is about self-preservation, self-exaltation, self-glorification. But the man that knew how to give his best, that man became popular in heaven. Where is thy brother? We are not taught correctly. There is something wrong with our doctrine. He came again. And he said by faith. By faith. Enoch. Enoch walked with God and was not. I wish we. I don't have time to explain so much. What it means to walk with God. But. The easiest way I can explain this thing. It means. To become a puppet in the hand of a spirit. Everything God intends, the guy presents himself. He says, Lord, what will you have me do? That's the language of a man that walks with God. What will you have me do? What will you have me do? He is coming out of one crisis and then you think he's dying. And the next time he goes to pray, he says, Lord, what will you have me do? Somebody just emptied his bank account because. They are about to put a prayer meeting together. And the next time he comes, he say, Lord, what will you have me do? Lord. So God say, go to Benue and raise a prayer cry for seven days. He goes there as he's coming back. Lord, what will you have me do? Give this brother all the clothes that is in your wardrobe and offer it need it. Lord, what will you have me do? Go and empty your bank account. Lord, what will you have me do? And then, well, you don't know what it means when he say, end up walk with God. That was why he, he became the delight of God. You know, most of us here, in heaven, we have a, a, a sickness called paralysis. Because when God wants to move through us, He doesn't move. God wants somebody to pray in the night, and then He came through your portal. But God, no matter the nudge, you are, His paralysis, He can't move. So, even though God is exactly energy, the hand is like this. God said, move, the hand is, we are paralyzed. Because we don't know the way of Enoch. Enoch walked with God and was not. You can't do that until you die to flesh. So the path that Enoch created is the path of death. Those are the things we don't hear in church anymore. That's why we have become the way we are. Everything we do is about our glory. So when you come for the morning service and the power of God moves in the evening, you don't only come late, but you walk like this. <laughs> Meanwhile, meanwhile, the fathers, <laughs> see, there is an infirmity that God needs to remove from our soul if we will be able to host the glory. I'm telling you, these things, I'm saying them as simple as it is, but like I told you from the beginning, it's the Holy Ghost that ministers to the heart of man. Because if these things are not walked into your soul, you will see the revival, you will not be part of it. Because you will think it's about charisma. You will think it's even about anointing. God may settle you with a gift, but the men that have inheritance are the people that walk with him. Notice that in this scripture, it is a reward the Bible was talking about. It wasn't talking about the things they had in, the, in, in time. Those things were not counted. If you come and, when we talk about Abraham here, you will discover that in Genesis 24, from verse 1 to 3, the Bible spoke of how God blessed Abraham. He said Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. In gold, in silver, in cattle. But when they began to read Abraham's citation from heaven, there was no gold mentioned. There was no cattle mentioned. All the things that were recorded from the time dimension were not captured from the heavenly dimension. The same scripture, but witnesses coming from two different quarters. The witness from the headquarters captured his gold, his silver, and his cattle. But when they were judging from heaven, it was his faith and obedience that appeared in heaven. So they teach you about Abraham, and everything they tell you is what? Abraham's blessings. They don't tell you about Abraham's dealings. Meanwhile, the one that is recorded in heaven are his dealings. So you read Genesis 24, and you read Hebrews 11. You will discover that the report about Abraham are different. 
There was a news casted on earth. There was another news cast from heaven. They are different frequencies. If we must carry what God wants us to carry, our priorities must change again. Most of us here think we are ready for what is going to happen. You don't know yet. What you don't know is that since you started coming close to God, the principalities have sent demons around your life. The reason you have not noticed is because you have not ascended high enough. When you ascend, you will see those demons. You know what those demons are doing? They don't come to attack you first. When they come, they study your, they study your appetite. They will flash you with money. They will flash you with women. They will flash you with pride. They will flash you with anger. They will make sure they carry out a catalog of study around you. And when, you know the Bible said, no weapon fashioned against you. Those are tailor-made weapons with your specification in view. Before those weapons are fashioned, those demons come and study your life first. When they discover everything that is your weakness, they go and record it in the chronicles of darkness. And then they are waiting for you. The day when God wants to move because you refuse to be purged, the day when God wants to move, then they will bring the lexicon that they studied about you. And they will release it on you and you will crash. Many don't understand. This is a game of spirits. And the idea is relevance in the kingdom of those spirits. But we are not taught. We are not taught correctly. You may think that you are drawing close to God. You love him. You have not checked your appetite well. If you are honest to yourself. And you go to do a heart check and you sit down. You will discover that there are certain weaknesses that the Holy Ghost has been hammering on for the past six months. You act as if you are not hearing. And you have been walking in disobedience. What you don't know is that the only way the Holy Ghost will make you relevant in what God wants to do. Both in time and eternity. Is when those appetites are dealt with. If not, you will be where the reviver. You may even be talking the language of the reviver. You will not be part of it. And you can use charisma to blend in. But when you appear in heaven, you will not see any reward. Because when the immortals come to check, they will not even check your manifestation. Did you study about Noah here? Noah built an ark for 100 years. The dimensions of the ark that Noah was building, no architect drew it on ground. He was seeing it in heaven and doing it on earth. That means Noah walked in discernment of spirit for 100 years. Noah was looking at the spirit realm the way I'm looking at you like this. And he was building the ark. He will see the dimension. He will build it. He built that ark for 100 years. But when the spirits came, they didn't talk about Noah's dexterity in manipulating and operating from the spirit realm. They said the reverence, his reverence, his reverence. That was what the immortal saw. So all this while that Noah was walking in discernment of spirit, he could... He will look in the spirit realm and say, no, 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 this nail that you put here, remove this nail from here, put the nail here. As I checked heaven, this is where the nail is. Have you seen somebody walking in that type of word of knowledge before? He comes and tells you, say, no, 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 that your ID card, there is 234 there. Check your ID card, then you will check and you now discover 234 is there. You that own it, you don't even know. Such is the forensic nature of the operation. But the, the, the immortals didn't see the guy's dimension. When the spirit came, he said, when God spake, Noah moved with fear. So Noah's fear was what they were judging in heaven. And for 100 years while he was walking, they were busy checking the cal The calibrator was busy checking his fear. His fear. When he started and when he was ending the ark, was his fear for God still intact? Oh, he has passed. Meanwhile, when we start, we say we love God, we love God, until what we are doing begins to bring 600,000 and 1 million. And then we say, oh man, something is happening. Until we begin to open blind eyes. Meanwhile, when the spirit comes, he will not check the manifestation. He will go and gauge you again. That love that you had when you started and now that you are 10 years in what you are doing, is this still intact? If it's not intact, there's no, you are beginning to lose credit in heaven. That is why the calling is not necessarily about the impact in time. It's about the degree to which you are building in Zion. The church in Ephesus 
they grew so much in great dimension of the spirit that they were correcting and judging apostles. But Jesus came and said, well, what we saw when you began in heaven was love, your first love. It was what created your motivation, your press for God. But now you have grown in manifestation. When we checked in heaven, you have no gauge. So based on what the court of heaven is saying now, we want to remove your candlestick. So at the peak of the ministry, when the guy is raising dead men, he thinks that he's high in rank. But the verdict of heaven at that time is that they want to what? Remove your candlestick. So you don't know why some people are the climax of their ministry. That's where you hear that they, they, they saw them with, with somebody. Something happened. Their candlestick were removed. So the covering they had from Zion was lifted, became exposed. And the principality struck them. Heaven is the first priority. The reason we pursue what we pursue in time is not because we want to be relevant in time. The reason we do what we do in time is because we are aware that there is a place in heaven for us. This is why the greatest pursuit of the devil is for a place. Peter came and said, give him no place to the devil. If you allow the devil a place in your life, you have forfeited what was written concerning you in Zion. And these things, I tell you, they may not necessarily be sin-based, but they may be intelligences of darkness, shrouded in so much wisdom that yourself cannot see it. Very little element of pride. So because you came for the fellowship and they offended you, you say, me, I'm no longer part of what they are doing. How can they... That means all the while when you were doing it, you thought you were special. And you thought it was because of you that what was happening was happening. So you were struggling with the glory that is meant for God. You had no place there in the first place. You will notice that when the fellowship begins to go high in the spirit, most of you will be cut off. You will be purged out of the system because you have no place. The men that are relevant with God in time, the reason they stay relevant is because they are conscious of the crown of life that is in heaven. The day that thing is lost, your priority in time will be affected. Everything you do will be motivated by things, elements born in the natural. And every time you hear a gospel that fails to paint a picture of eternity for you and to let you know that there are stakes in this kingdom, what you have heard is a setup. It can bring you influence, it can bring you money, it can bring you health. But at the end of the day, you will only become stronger to do what is not consistent with your ordination. And the bigger you become in time, the smaller you become in heaven. This is why we keep our gaze in Zion. Because time has no future. The earth has already been judged. The conclusions have already been passed. Do we abhor prosperity? Do we abhor the blessings of God? No. We need it in order to advance. That which God is doing on earth in order to get relevance in eternity. God doesn't reward men in time. He blesses men in time, but he rewards men in eternity. You can pray in time and it can attract a blessing. You can give in time, it can attract a blessing. But what will give you your reward in eternity is the degree to which you are consistent with what was written concerning you before you were born. Because the idea is for you to be reinstated from what the devil wants to take away from you. Every one of us is an enthroned personality. You must have heard that God is called King of Kings. In Revelation 1 verse 6, He said unto him that washed us in his blood and made us kings and priests unto God. Whether you will sit on your throne or not depends on what you do with the grace of God you have received in time and the mentality with which you approach your responsibility in this realm. There are many Gospels out there. There are many messages that are intelligently framed, articulately communicated. 
But if your soul is still alive, when you hear something that touches eternity, your soul will resonate with it. We bow our heads and pray for a moment. I came to say this this evening because it will be the basis of the many things we say. By the time we continue tomorrow, we will be talking very high. But at that time, I will believe that you understand the foundation of what I am trying to lay. If the reason you pursue God is so that He can bless you with something, it means you are a creature of time. But if you don't, if you don't need to go too far, if you look around you, you will see a lot of unbelievers that have what you are, you are pursuing God for, that don't know God. The reason you pursue God is for financial prosperity. I think it's better you go and become a student of Dangote. It may be faster for you. Because you don't, you don't necessarily need a relationship with God to be financially prosperous. There is a residual grace in nature. Through hard work and diligence, you can maximize it to prosper in this realm. And there are many unbelievers and godless people that are millionaires. Go and check Forbes' list of the richest men in this world. You'll be shocked that when you mention 50, there's no pastor there. Because the goal of God is not primarily financial prosperity. We need it to advance the kingdom, but there's something deeper. God comes for the souls of men. The reason you are pursuing God is to get married to a good woman. Our ancestors didn't know God, but none of them had divorce cases. The best of families, the best of homes, were in the 80s and in the 70s. They lived in perfect harmony. None of them knew Jesus Christ. So the reason you are pursuing God is so that God can open your eye to see a woman in a vision that you are a joker. Our ancestors didn't need the Holy Spirit. They married women and they had very good homes. Peaceful. Peaceful homes were in those days. Those were the days when men lived for 120 years. Not because they are taking therapies, but because they had peace of mind. They came home and their wives worshipped them. They came after the toil of the day. They knew where to find peace because the women were cultured. They didn't know the Holy Spirit. And the women knew that the honor of womanhood was to raise her home so she could endure hardship and raise a family. And the family was a blossoming family. They didn't know God. So if all your prayer is about marrying a woman to have peace of mind, then you are mundane. You are still a creature of time. If all your prayer is about relevance and influence, you have not read about world history very well. Go and read about Alexander the Great. You will find out that if it's about greatness, there are many kings in this world that didn't know God. Where do you stand in eternity? That's the greatest motivation of our lives. We know that before we came, the great one by his wisdom have already written who we will be and what we should become. The devil came and obliterated the process. But by the wisdom of the divine, he brought us the personality called the Christ. So that through him and by grace, we can become what God wants us to be. So that the devil, notwithstanding, we can be everything God wants us to be. The idea of grace is to reveal that the devil cannot stop the counsel of God. Before I came here, God planned for me before I came. And I will maximize the provision of grace and become everything God wants me to be. The devil notwithstanding. So when I walk through time, I walk in view of eternity. Jesus was walking in Nazareth. He said, the son of man which is in heaven. Paul said, if we are dead in Christ, then let our affection be on the things that are above, where Christ dwells. He said, for our life is hid in Christ, in God. But we are living as beings of time. Everything they tell us is about preservation. It's about self-preservation, self-exhortation, self-glorification. Meanwhile, all of these things, the princes of this world, the kings of this world, they entered into it. They didn't know God. 
till tomorrow the richest men in the world they have no religion men like Bill Gates men like Carlos Slim they have no religion men like Warren Buffett you go and check their history on Wikipedia and when you check religion you see no religion they don't care about God in Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 to 2 Jesus spoke about a godless ruler that neither fear God nor man so it's possible for a man not to fear God or fear man but he will still be mighty on the earth the guy feared neither God nor man, but he was a ruler. Who told you you need God to be a great man? You need God to have a place in eternity. That's why we strive. That's why we press. Because we know that because of the fall, there are many distractions. The devil wants to woo us away from ordination. He peeped through Zion and he saw that you are supposed to be a bright light. Because before the world fell, the Bible called him the son of the morning. He knew the glory of walking in the midst of the coals of fire. And he has seen that when God created you, he created you to walk in Eden, the very height where he fell from. So he came to corrupt the protocol of Eden so that we cannot walk in fellowship. But we have seen beyond time. I have seen that the goal of this thing is to stand in the presence and to experience God. He came to Abraham, he said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. There's nothing God can give you that is bigger than himself. The devil knows. The Bible said he walked in the midst of the coals of fire. He knows everything about Zion. He understands the beauty of Zion. He said the anointed cherub that covered it. He was walking as a cherub. He said he walked in the coals of fire. He was walking as a seraphim. He said from the day of thy creation Thy types and thy tablets were in thee The devil understand the mystery Of the songs of songs He know what it means for God To bring inspiration to the heart of a man By fellowship and intimacy Because he could trap inspiration in his own heart He knows what it means When God decks a man with beauty With wisdom and with excellence So he has seen That every one of us will shine Like light Adam would not wear clothes, but he was covered with glory. The devil could not take it. So what I lost, God has given to another creation. It will not come to pass. So God came with a strategy. So he gives us callings. So the other one is an intercessor. So long as he stays on the altar, a point will come where through intercession he will break into heaven. And he will become like the cherubims of glory. So men can walk in time, but in time, they are walking like beings of heaven. John will stand in the Isle of Patmos and John will be talking because seals are breaking in heaven. He has ascended. He has seen his true reality. But we are taught how to survive in time. The other one is an evangelist. All he needs to do is to enter nations to nation and bring witness. The more he does it, a day comes when he's clothed with the sword. Because that calling it's a gate through which he can enter into the full scope of his reality. Hope you know the angels are not the same. Micah is a warrior angel. So when he shows up, you see the artillery of war. Lucifer was an angel of beauty and glory because he was a custodian of light and sound. The same way we have different dimensions. Our callings are gateway through which we can enter those dimensions. You are a singer, you think it's about a voice. What you don't know is that your voice is an infrastructure to create a spiritual resonance. And so long as you master that pathway, a point will come where you will align with the angels. John walked in this path until they couldn't kill him. They tried everything. We were told by church history that they threw him in boiling oil. They dragged him in the street by chariot. He couldn't die. So they sentenced him from civilization. While he was in Patmos, he entered heaven. And he began to meet his brothers. That was when John knew that some of his brothers were angels. Because God is calling an assembly of the family on earth and in heaven. There is a quadrant in Zion. You don't know where you stand. So you play with your life. Who told you you are a creator of time? You are bigger than a prophet. You are bigger than an apostle. At the end of time, when we cross into Zion, we will be witnesses. We will be overcomers. Because as an overcomer, you can be a tree of life. As an overcomer, I can be a name of God. As an overcomer, you can be a light in Zion. As an overcomer, we are different things. According to the multifaceted dimensions of God. 
But our calling is the gate to enter. Our calling, our calling. When a man has not perceived the dictates of ordination, then he is a lost personality. He's lost. He's lost. The goal is Zion. We are traveling from eternity to eternity. Earth is not a destination, brother. Who told you earth is a destination? You came from eternity. You are going into eternity. Because God needs to be just in rewarding humankind. There's a reward system in eternity that you must go through time to be able to touch it. That's why time is necessary. Why do you think when you gave your heart to Christ, God didn't carry you? Because if He carry you, you will not have a place. So you need to invest in heaven from earth. We live like creatures of time. Because we were deceived that everything begins and ends in time. But He told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. I didn't begin in time. Who told you I will end in time? Come Allah has a hash. You want to pray in tongues? This is the time. Haila. Praise the Lord. Hope you had a great night. And you lift your hands toward heaven one more time and talk to the Lord. Just whisper something to Jesus from the depths of your heart. As we begin to journey this morning and look into scriptures, trusting God that He will bring us insight, that we activate His deposits in our spirit. There are certain deposits of God in your spirit that, unless activated, you will never have meaning and reference in life. Most times the reason we come for meetings is not to hear new things. If you get 10 good books, you will hear more than 70% of what you need to hear about God. As far as the revelation of God for your generation is concerned. So the idea is not novelty. The idea is depth. The depth where utterances come from and the depth where you are hearing from. That's why before you come for meetings, you pray. You can hear God loves you from another depth. Your story. Not because it's new, but you are hearing from a depth. And somebody can say God loves you, but he said it from a depth. And it will change your story. So talk to God and ask him to open your heart this morning to receive his word. The Holy Ghost began to teach me a lot of things and it removed pressure from my life. My labors became different. My labors were no longer about men. It was about fraternity. It was about interaction with the Spirit. I stopped judging things from the plane of the natural. I started judging things from their depths in the Spirit. Ask the Lord to minister to you this morning. I want to share a few thoughts with us this morning that we create an awareness, an awareness, an awareness beyond cognitive knowledge, an awareness of the life of God on our inside and how to maximize the same so that our life will count not only in time but in eternity. I told us yesterday one of the greatest plague. One of the greatest plague in life is to have lived a long life, but not to be in the radar of heaven. That when you journey out of time, thinking you are great, and then you get to heaven, they say you are nothing. Meanwhile, you were popular among men. Everybody knew you. Everybody approved of you, but heaven did not approve of you. It's a crisis of life. He said, away from me, you workers of iniquity. It's a crisis of life. Ask the Lord to speak to you and to furnish an understanding on your inside that will make you relevant in eternity. I read the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and I encountered something that shook my foundation. After the Bible listed the heroes of faith and their exploits, he said they shattered the foundations of nations. He said they wrought righteousness. He said they obtained promises. They shot the mouth of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. He said weak men were made valiant in strength and they put to fire. 
they put to flight the armies of the alien. When he out, outrightly enumerated their exploits, he now spoke about some others that were sown asunder. And he didn't call their names, he didn't call their exploits. He said, but those men, the world is not worthy of their names. They were more ranking than the people that the world knew. They had more rank in the spirit than the people that did all the exploits. He said, these ones, you can't call their names in time. If you want to find out their stature in heaven, it's only in heaven you can find out their stature. Because if you call them among men, it's, it's, you have dishonored them. There's no place you can place them. Meanwhile, their exploits were not numbered. Their names were not mentioned. But in heaven, they are higher than all the generals you know on earth. Ask the Lord to talk to you. See, that's why competition dies. People may think they are fighting you. And they are making a mess out of you. What you don't know is that that is when you are gaining rank in the spirit. <laughs> See, this is a puzzle. I told you it's a game of spirits. That moment when the devil thinks he's buffeting you and you are going through hard times, that's when your rank is increasing. Job was prospering. The Bible said he was the greatest of all men in the east. And then the devil came and attacked Job. Meanwhile, in the days of Job's crisis, that was when his true standing in the spirit was revealed. That was when God knew that Job could not insult him. That was when God knew that Job was a true witness. And in Job 42 verse 10, the Bible said God came back and Job received double of everything he ever had. So in crisis, what the devil called crisis was actually a promotion for Job. It was in crisis that his rank was increased. Those things that Job went through in nine months, the promotion he received in nine months, he may not have received it in ten years. See, this is why the Bible says all things work together for good for them that love God. Men think they are buffeting you, they are frustrating you. What they don't know is that they are shutting down the days of your promotion. Because before you prove your righteousness and your faithfulness to God, it may have taken 10 years. So the devil came thinking he wants to frustrate your life. He now choke, he reduces the lifespan, the time duration for you to prove yourself before God. The things you would have gone through in 10 years, the devil constrain it to 6 months. And then in 6 months you receive promotion of 10 years. So the devil thinks he's fighting you, he's promoting you. It's a manipulation in the realm of the spirit. Can you go ahead and ask the Lord to speak to you this morning? That your circumstance you are fighting can become the greatest blessing of your life. That's why when you go into the future, you don't remember the years when you enjoyed. It was the years that were difficult to remember. Because that's when your life is defined. Go ahead and talk to Jesus this morning. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. And I tell you something. It's important for you to judge things the way Spirit judge them. See, we can be singing in church. You think the person leading the worship is the person with the best voice. You will be shocked when God enters the meeting. The person God is hearing louder is the person that is communicating experience. The person leading the song in the choir may have a good voice, but he's just singing English language. When a spirit comes, he's not moved by how cognitive your song is. He's checking the substance of life that is coming out of your spirit. This is why certain things we do in church are the precursors of blessings. A lot of people are not aware. You have not traveled with God, so a lot of things will not make sense to you. You have not had experiences where God showed up for you. So a lot of things will not make sense. You will relate with it as English language. We can come to church if we are grateful. We will sing this song for two hours and go home. We have been blessed. <laughs> ah! This is how spirit train men. You may read the Bible, you will not be knowledgeable. Until God comes and begins to bring illumination. Bring illumination. And then God reminds you those days when you walk through a dark path. The traps that were set there before you passed and knew nothing happened. He will show you the things he played, the rules he played. Have you been with somebody in a relationship and then something happened? And then you were angry with that person for five years. I watched a movie. A lady had some powers. She could control fire. And then one day the brother came in. And then he knew that the father was always trying to stop the lady from using those powers. So the brother came in and saw that the father was burning in the house. And he told the sister, you can control power, stop the fire. And the sister refused. The brother punished the sister for 30 years. 30 years later, he was still angry with the lady. Then the lady now came and told her the story. 
that when he was leaving the house and he was quarreling with the father and he pushed the father, the father went and the father was, was pierced to a wall. So the guy actually killed the father. And then when the fire was burning, the reason the lady didn't stop the fire was because if she stopped the fire, they will see that the father was not killed by the fire. Ah. They will see that it was the spear that killed the father. So he was, she was actually saving the brother. Mm. And for 30 years she was bearing the body. So the guy that was angry for 30 years broke down and began to cry. What you think you know can be an error until they show you the bad picture. <laughs> God can come and show you the reason why you went through a circumstance. That he was saving you from something else that would have destroyed your destiny. For 30 years you were angry with somebody. Meanwhile, for 30 years the person was saving your life. So that your name will not be destroyed. If you see the manipulation in the realm of the spirit, you will know that that relationship that you were embarrassed from, it was not an embarrassment. God saw into 20 years of your future. That's why he stopped it. And the only way he would have stopped it was through that path. You will kneel down and you will begin to cry. Normal people appreciate God when they see his intervention. But wise men appreciate God even before they see his intervention. Yea, they know that even their future is already preserved because they have judged him faithful. Can you go ahead and appreciate the Lord this morning? When I realized that worship was not about a good voice, I gave God thanks because I didn't even have a good one. Now it's beautiful to have a good voice, but I saw that worship was the release of the substance of life as a statement of gratitude to God. Ah. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this morning. We ask again that you open our eyes to perceive of your essence, of your reality. We ask that you instruct us, you invigorate us, you empower us, so that at the end, we will become wise, we will become faithful, we will become diligent in stewarding that which you have planted in our spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Sit down, God bless you. I will be sharing with us this morning, and then we will take time to pray. I told you yesterday that I would try as much as possible to keep it very calm so that, and not very fast actually, so that you can really interact with what I'm saying. Have you watched or listened to a comedian before? You finish talking, after five minutes you now realize, oh, this is what he said and you start laughing. You heard the English but you didn't understand the depth where he spoke from. So sometimes when we speak too fast, people don't hear half of what we say. They thought they heard us. The guy cracked a joke, and then you did like this. After five minutes, you now understood what he was saying. You now started laughing. That's when you got what he said. I pray that God will help us to understand <laughs> this morning. Meanwhile, spiritual things are deeper than comedy. So mysteries are shrouded in, in much depth. It will take the Holy Ghost to unveil it to you. Before you understand. You can hear one sentence and you will learn it for five years. Every year the Lord will come and open another layer. Every year the Lord. You thought you heard it. Then you become humble at the word of God. This morning. I want to show us. If I can. The credentials of a territorial warrior. You know yesterday began to establish certain foundations to help us to articulate both cognitively and spiritually the depth of the body and the emphasis that God was bringing our way. Sometimes we are excited about topics but we don't know the depth. God may appear to you and say, I want to begin to use you. And then you run and tell your friends that God said he wants to use me. What you did not hear is that God is telling you that from that day you will die. You will die to your ambitions. You will die to your plans. You will die to your future. You will die to your appetites. But all you heard was, I will begin to use you. A friend of mine came to me and said, Jesus appeared to him. And he told him, you are the Apostle Paul of this generation. Immediately I said, sorry. Because (laughs) when I checked his life, I knew that the work that God will do there, he will be crushed. 
Because Paul was a trained barrister. He never practiced for once. The only time he was given opportunity to give expression to his, barrister, to his legal training was when he spoke for himself before the king. And the only recommendation he received is that too much knowledge has made you mad. When Paul read out his credentials in the spirit, it was a sign of a man who is bedeviled. Because part of his credentials were the many times he was whipped. It was the many times he died and woke up. It was the many times he bore injuries and entered the city. They stoned him to death. The believer stood around him, he woke up, and he entered the next city to preach. You know, you, you preach with golden shoes. You see your shoe now. The time you imported from Ukraine. Paul went to preach with bandages. So when he comes, the people first of all pity him and say, where are you coming from? Come, come, come. Let's use hot water and massage you. That's the way Paul entered into cities. He entered with bandage. Sometimes he'll be talking, he'll say, aye. The pain is still on his jaw. Those... <laughs> so my friend came, when he said, Paul, he was looking at Paul's rank in the spirit. He didn't see Paul's crisis and cross. So I said, sorry, you will die. You. Meanwhile, after three weeks, the apostle Paul went back to his normal life. Up to now, he has not recovered. So, it's important that when a spirit utters his voice in your direction, sit down first and meditate on it. Paul said, when it pleased the Father to reveal the Son in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood, but I went into the wilderness of Arabia. Jesus was already revealed to him, but he knew that it was more, more than what he heard. So he went into the wilderness. He was there for many years. That was when the substance of the revelation of the Christ that was given to him was crystallized. And he came out of the wilderness as a wise technocrat. Some of the things that Jesus himself mentioned passively, Paul sat down and gave us the lexicon of how to build it into experience. Jesus mentioned church. He just mentioned it. But Paul came and defined what the church is about. It was Paul that gave us all the outlays of the church. The lexicon, the depths, the scope of the dimensions of the church. How he was able to enter into that depth of wisdom was because he separated himself. Because there is something that needed to be done to his soul before he can communicate the counsel of God. Because the counsel of God is not English language. It's spirit and life. They are post to Paul. Paul was not at the feast of the Last Supper. He came out of the wilderness and he began to tell them what Jesus told the twelve disciples. That means in the spirit it was possible that Paul was traveling to places where things happened, both in the past and in the future. <laughs> he came, he was telling them how the Lord took bread and broke it and said, where were you? No book of the Bible was yet written. Paul was the first to write the books in the New Testament. How did he know about what God did in the upper room with the apostles? That means he began to travel in the spirit. But all of those dimensions were locked up in what? When he pleased the Father to reveal the Son in me. How he could enter into the past and into the future. How he could enter into heaven and hell. All of that was captured in what? When he revealed the Father in me. So there are certain things and certain dimensions God brings us into. We don't know the scope. God will come to you and say, I want to make you an apostle to the nations. All you heard was a title. You didn't see the dimensions of death. You didn't see the dimensions of wisdom. You didn't see the dealings you will go through. There are times when men will expose you to public disgrace. You, that's part of the syllabus. You may think because you are an apostle to the nation, you will read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you are ready. You are a joker. You are a joker. When you finish reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will read about faithfulness. You will read about long-suffering. And then you will quote it. Then if God wants to teach you long-suffering, God will now come and allow a public embarrassment. And that embarrassment will last for nine months. It is when you stand through it for nine months that you understand long-suffering. Meanwhile, that's one verse. <laughs> but you read the Bible in two weeks. But you will understand one verse in nine months. That is why we don't preach everything. We preach what God has taught us. Because the message of an apostle is captured in his dealings. The syllabus of your doctrine is captured in your dealing. Anything you have not been dealt in, you don't have the authority to water it. This is why you may be preaching eternal life. Me, I will be preaching alignment. The reason is because 
by reason of dealing, you have understood eternal life. All of us know the doctrine, but we don't have authority to communicate the same thing. So you hear Bishop Oedeko preaching faith, you will come and say, Faith is the softest of things hope for you, you are a clown. Because that faith is teaching. There was a time when he came out of service. His wife just gave birth. And God said, empty everything you have. And he gave all he had. And they went home with a newborn baby without food, without water, without milk. How will he survive? He doesn't know. That's how he learned faith. He didn't only learn faith by reading it in the Bible. He passed through a dealing. Until now, he's a system that mirrors the dimensions of faith. So anything he says is animated. This is why photocopying is a crisis. It's an error in the spirit. <laughs> it's an error. For us to become territorial warriors, there are certain operations of the spirit we must open our lives to so that our dimensions can begin to find expression. Because your weapon may be your tongue. My weapon may be my eyes. Somebody else's weapon may be his hand. There are different dealings we will go through for our tools to be sharpened. So that we can use them. This is why all of us, we study the scriptures, but the dealings that God will expose us to will be different. Because he is trying to awaken us in the spirit and to sharpen our tools so that we can use it for warfare. This is where Bible study migrates from revelation to, to transformation. But not many are exposed to these dimensions of truth. We see a lot of things, we have little results. Because we don't understand the pathway of dealing. I want to show us very few credentials. You know, yesterday I tried to, to talk around one. But we couldn't finish because there were too many things to explain. The thing I wanted to talk about yesterday was the nature of God. As a credential for a territorial warrior. That was the only point. But we couldn't gather it together because it was humongous. The nature of God. For a man to become a warrior and a prince in a territory, the nature of God must become his DNA. And I'm not talking about what was imputed in you in Christ. I'm talking about what you have been able to conduct in your soul. Because you can have the nature of God in your spirit, but in your soul you are a prince of the devil. So a territorial warrior is a man that has sustained experientially the nature of God. Listen, in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. Before God gave man authority to rule over territories, he said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. And the Bible said, in the image of God he made man, male and female he made them. And God came and said, let them have dominion. That means dominion is a proponent of nature. Dominion is not a function of your learning. Dominion is not a function of your vastness. Dominion is primarily a function of your nature. Because the moment the man was created in the image and likeness of God, creation came under his authority. And the Bible said something. In Psalm 82 from verse 5, it says, Ye are gods, because ye are the children of the Most High God. He said, But you know not, neither will they understand. He said, Therefore the foundation of the earth is out of course. So the reason man lost dominion over the earth was not because he became daft in understanding. The reason he lost dominion was because he fell from a rank in Zion. The nature of God in him was compromised. Therefore, dominion was no longer a possibility that he could conduct within the confines of his habitation. And I told us the devil understands this very intelligently. So the devil comes to violate your nature. Because the devil knows that the moment your nature is violated, you have lost your authority. You may be talking what you are talking, but the results will be different. The reason is because it experientially nature is lost. So I told us when the devil comes, the first thing he does is that he invokes darkness into our soul. And I said darkness is not the absence of light. Darkness is actually the manifestation among men of the life of the devil. The same way light is the manifestation among men of the life of God. So anybody that walks by darkness already functions by the nature of the devil. So Jesus came to the Jews and said, You are of your father the devil, and the works of your father you shall do. So when the devil comes to us, the first thing he wants to compromise is the nature of God. Because the idea was for that nature to be downloaded into our spirit and through our cooperation and partnership with the Holy Spirit, we conduct that nature into our soul. 
so that our soul can become an expression of God. Remember, the man that God gave the nature was not yet a spirit man. He was a soulish man. Because in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he said he breathed into the man and he became a living soul. So the nature that has dominion is not the nature in your spirit. It's the nature in your soul. The extent of God that is formed in your soul is what determines the depth of your dominion. So we cannot do anything about territories unless, first of all, we have become carriers of the nature of God experientially. You can talk and say you are a Christian, you are a believer. You can say you are the righteousness of God. But until something happens to the boundaries of your soul and the righteousness of God you profess becomes an experience, you don't have authority over territories. You can deceive people, you can manipulate a lot of things, but you will check. That's why I told you yesterday, if you want to see the potency of your intercession, go and check the territory you are praying for. It will reveal to you how bereft of the nature of God you, are, you have. Nature is a heavy molecule in the spirit. Matters of nature are heavy. And God will not compromise it for one minute. Because he knows that if the devil gets that aspect of your soul, you are already useless and irrelevant as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. You can be in church walking, but you will not appear in Zion. You can follow them for evangelism, but you are, your words will have no impact. So I told you how that Jesus got that himself. He got that himself so much. Because he knows the reason the people are sanctified was not because he was talking about holiness. You know, we think people become holy when we preach holiness. We think people become righteous when we preach righteousness. We are joking. Go to many places when they shout holiness. They even threaten people with hair. Yet, that's where you see the highest, the highest, the highest trend of immorality. The pastor comes up and says, if you sin, you will die. You will go to hell. The moment they close from church, you see, oh boy, how far now? Waiting to happen. Two people are leaving a the crusade. They are going home together. What the man said could not travel into their soul because the depth that his word can journey to is the quality of God that has been formed on his soul. Nature. Jesus said, for their sake I sanctify myself so that they too will be sanctified. Therefore, sanctification is not first of all a doctrinal issue. Sanctification is first of all a quality of the soul of the one who is talking it. And he walked in those corridors until a point came when he said, because of the words that I have spoken to you, you are washed. You are cleansed. You are sanctified. Because I am speaking from a pure fountain. This is why the devil comes to corrupt your soul. Because he knows that you are impotent when your soul is corrupt. Five of us can gather ourselves and say, Lagos must change. We will pray for 50 years. The devil will be laughing. He will not even come for the prayer meeting to check. Because he knows what we are saying have no power. Before we begin to pray, we first of all come under the government of the Holy Spirit until something is done to our soul. A liar cannot convict another liar. It is two liars deceiving themselves. A fornicator cannot convict, convict another fornicator. You may think it's about advice. You advise the person. Even you yourself, when you go to sin, don't you remember everything they tell you about sin? Me, I was a very cold, I was a hardened sinner. So, I know. When you are going to commit the same sin you are always committing, you remember everything they told you, yet you go forward. <laughs> because advice doesn't have the power to tame a spirit. When a spirit talks, it talks with energy. And if that energy binds you, even though cognitively you know the right thing to do, you will still walk in error. That is why I say they know not. Neither will they understand because the foundations of the earth have fallen from their costs. The guys know the ways of darkness. They know the powers of evil. They understand the implication of sin. But the power to walk righteousness is no longer there. Why? Because nature has been compromised. The devil sets them into perpetual slavery until their voices are no longer heard in Zion. Their location is lost in the spirit. Because the man fell, God came and said, Adam, where are thou? Adam is still in the garden. And the last time I checked, you are called the omniscient one. Meaning you know everything. How come you are looking for Adam? Because what connects Adam to him vitally was his nature. And when that nature was broken, even though he was in the garden, he was lost. That's why many of us are in church, but we are lost. If God comes to church, he will say, Nathaniel, where are you? Meanwhile, when he was saying, Nathaniel, where are you? Nathaniel was preaching righteousness on the microphone. God is righteous. Then God shows into the service and says, Nathaniel, where are you? 
the guy was screaming on the microphone, but the immortal one can't find him because the vistas through which your dimensions are revealed is the nature of God. And when God came, there's no connection. He looked upon the garden. The man was still there. He said, hey, damn, we are down. Nature is lost. Territorial warriors are people that have conducted the life of God in their spirit until it dominates their soul. So warfare does not begin in the territory. It begins in the, in the heart. That's why I told you that a territory is not necessarily a geographical location. It's a place. If the devil is able to sit in your soul, you are his servant. What you are doing is a joke. You will speak, you can't mobilize angels. You can't even discern God. You can come to a place and assume that when the worship is high, that time the power of God can move. So every time you want to move in power, you ho, 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 ho. And then people who are psychologically destabilized fall down. You say, ah, the power of God was strong in this service. Go and check their life after three weeks. Nothing has changed. Because every time a man collides with the power of God, the first thing that happens is transformation. He said in John chapter 1 verse 11, He came unto his own, his own received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave what? Power. And what did the power do first? To become the sons of God. So if people fall down in your meeting, they go back, we give God praise. Because we don't know what he's doing. But the first time a man fell down, a rib was removed from him and another being was created. So if somebody falls down and nothing is formed in the soul of that person, maybe the person was overwhelmed. It was euphoria. You know, this is called principle of first mention. The first time a man was slain in the Bible, what happened? His rib was removed and a woman was created, a suitable helper. So if a man falls down and stands up and everything that happened was falling down, it was a waste of divine investment. Every time the power of God moves, people can be slain. People may not be slain. People can even laugh. People can feel vibrations. Anything can happen. But at the end of the day, let it transform the man to a degree. That's how making begins in the spirit. The nature of God. You can be a deacon. You can be a pastor. You can be a prophet. You can be an apostle. But you have no implication in the territory. Meanwhile, people were in the city and Paul showed up without announcement, all the princes in the territory knew that a man has come. Because his name was an alarm in Zion. No announcement, no publicity. The guy enters a territory and they say, Jesus has come. I saw Jesus when he went to the mountain and proved himself before Lucifer. If you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, the Bible said in Luke chapter 4 verse 14, that as he returned from the mountain, his fame went abroad. He has not started preaching. He has not started healing the sick. No miracle has been done, but his what? His fame. The reason is because it was the spirits that announced him. A man who carries God, if he shows into a territory, the first people that do publicity are demons. They tell themselves that a high profile personality has gone, run away. Take cover, take cover, take cover. Because that man can banish you from this land. So the first publicity that was done for Jesus was not the, the evangelist. It was the demonic realm. They said the one that has come down is the son of God. So the Bible said his fame went abroad. No wonder he entered the synagogue immediately and the demons began to cry. Why have you come before your time? Our time has not yet come. Who told them? Nature was raging. So he said, let Adam and Eve have dominion. The reason is because they were created in his image and in his likeness. You can pray for your family for five years, nothing will happen. You will go and kneel down and cry and think when you cry and feel sorrowful, something will change. The person will die. The reason is not because God is unjust. Nature has not been formed. So you can't command spiritual authority. The whole power you need is already available in your spirit. But it is conducted in your soul. And your soul has not become a, a conduit to conduct the power of God. So the devil, even when you are crying, the devil will come and do certain things around you. We add depression. Meanwhile, the person is praying, but is falling into depression. The devil have known how cold you are and lukewarm that even in the moment that you be spiritual, he comes and manipulates you. No nature is formed. Warriors, warriors, warriors. 
are carriers of the life of God experientially. Before you talk power, talk life. It is when life is accomplished that power becomes a byproduct. He says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. You can't do the business of power unless you first of all have life. Matters of nature are heavy matters. That's what we tried to explain yesterday. And secondly, I need to show you how the nature of God is born in your soul. Because it's not going to be very effective if we just tell you what should be. And we don't tell you how what should be should be. Because you may go back home now and say, Kai, the nature of God is important. But how do, how do you develop the nature of God in your soul? You didn't do anything for it to be imparted into your spirit. But for it to be imparted into your soul, you will do a lot. This is the difference between the grace gospel and the kingdom gospel. The, great, the grace gospel is a gospel of receiving based on the finished works of Christ. The kingdom gospel is the gospel of responsibility based on what you have received. Because what you have received gives you or sentences you to a responsibility. That responsibility is what will make you relevant in Zion. It will be unjust for God to just show up and say, You sit on this throne. You sit on this throne. What is the basis? You leave this throne and come, it will be unjust. So the Bible told us a parable that God gave. He called laborers around 9 a.m. in the morning. He called some around 12. He called some around 3. And he called some around 5 p.m. And he paid all of them the same amount. And the people that came in the morning say, Why? He said, No, this is the contract you have with me. And you fulfilled your part, I fulfilled my part. Those other ones too, that's the contract they have with me. So it is by labor that God rewards. But one thing ordination does is that it distinguishes our kind of labor. So it's important for you to take advantage because your own service in the kingdom may be for three years. And you thought you had all the time, like Nehemiah. And then you are waiting until you leave for 35 years. So when you want to start, that's when your job ends. Because you saw somebody and started preaching at the age of 10. <laughs> and he has preached for <laughs> your own preaching. That's why when I preach, I preach with all my life. Because I don't know whether it's only this year I will be permitted to preach. By next year, God will remove me from the sea and send me to another country and say, go and be a missionary. And I will do underground work for the rest of my life. I will not have the privilege to preach again. So every message, I told myself, I said, if you cut five minutes of my clip, five minutes, it will change somebody's life. So sometimes before we come to preach, we pray in tongues for five hours. Sometimes, sometimes before we preach, we pray in tongues for many hours. So that by all means, God will alight on it. Because somebody else may preach for 60 years. I don't know whether my own preaching is one year. And meanwhile, if God remove you from the scene, some people may come and start saying, We know now, we know. We say this thing no go last. They are puppets. They have not seen into the spirit realm. Our assignments are different. My goal is not to preach like Bishop, but like Papa Adeboye. His duty may be to preach for 70 years because he's a father to the nation. Me, I'm a revivalist. God may say, preach for one year and go away. My job is done. If I go to heaven, I'll receive my reward. So I'm not trying to make this thing last. That's not part of my ambition. To say, this thing must have to last to at least for 20 years is not part of my ambition. I know my contract with God. The day my message finished, I'm out of the scene. People can say what they want to say. Go to Zion. You will find out who did his job. That's why I told you, some people's name was not mentioned. But the Bible said they are ranking in heaven. But nature is an important matter. What is it that informs your philosophies and your ideologies? It is the life that operates you. You want to get married. What is the operating system? You want to get a job. What is the operating system? Every day you go out. What is the operating system? You may not be aware, but that thing affects the territory more than your prayers. The extent to which God is formed in your soul affects your territory more than your prayers. A man who is of darkness can pray for five years if you have no impact. Because when he opens his mouth, it's an energy he releases into the atmosphere. And it's a negative energy. But somebody who God has so saturated can just alter a word and things will change. This is why God said you should not pride yourself in long, repeated prayers like the Pharisees. He said, your heavenly father knows 
That means there is a connection now. Nature has been established. So that guy is talking from the realm of sonship. But there are things to do to stir up the nature of God in your soul. You will be shocked. As I tell you these things, they are very simple, but those are the things you don't do. So when you see a man become mighty in God, you may think there's a secret. Maybe an angel appeared to him. There are many men that shook this world that never saw a vision. Some never spoke in tongues. Billy Graham never spoke in tongues. But for 55 years, he was consistently in U.S. Time magazine as one of the most influential men in the world. When he died, I'm not talking about kingdom honors yet. Even the world recognized it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When he died, where they placed his corpse was, corpse was where they placed American president that died on the seat. The whole country shut down because a preacher died, not a president. He never spoke in tongues. He didn't give us any record when Jesus appeared to him or when an angel showed up like this and said, Billy, Billy. Everything about him was so quiet. In fact, I was told that the crusade where he gave his heart to Christ was the only person. You will say, Kai, this crusade was a failure. Why did we spend money? You didn't see far. It was recorded by Wikipedia that he led 43 million people to Christ. Nature. Nature. Meanwhile, you, you come, you say, And then when you finish praying, even your family, nothing change. Nature. 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 So when the devil comes, the first thing he wants to do is to choke your soul with darkness. Because he knows that if darkness becomes your operating system, everything you do will be an effulgence of darkness. You may pray and you think you are praying intelligently, but it is an energy of the devil you are emitting. So when the devil comes to attack the sons of the kingdom, it begins from their nature. He fights their nature so that they can be compromised on the inside. And when a man is compromised on the inside, the Bible says when the light in you is darkness, so you are calling the name of Jesus that the hand of God may come down. The light in you is what? Darkness. Because nature is corrupt. So before you talk about matters of territory, you must first of all deal with the space of your soul. There are not too many ways of achieving this feat in the Bible. I will show you two. And then I will tell you the next credential of a territorial warrior. I thought these things were religious things. I told you part of the family story yesterday. I was preaching everywhere. My people were dying. And it was not natural event. A man sat on an altar. Please sit down. A man sat on an altar. And at different seasons he will come. And he will do a census in the family and point this person and knock the person out. He will come. And meanwhile the preacher was there with Titus. That was when I knew that this thing has nothing to do with religiosity. Men can honor you and say... God's servant. And then you do like this. It's even better when you are becoming old. But in the spirit you will be light. A, demo, a, a witch on IT can come and shut down family of 15 people. Because there is no body with stature. You hear that something happens to a man who says he's a spiritual man. And his case is worse than the unbeliever. And then when you check in the spirit... The person who did it was initiated two weeks ago. That means that person in two weeks has more spiritual intelligence than the believer for 20 years. It's a crisis. Sometimes I wonder how they train these people in the demonic coven. That somebody is initiated today and today the person is flying. Meanwhile, we, we come to church, we have a vision. We try to make everybody know that we are praying. And then when we open our eyes, we shifted two kilometers, two meters, two centimeters. We now say we are bilocating. Meanwhile, that is not a news in the demonic realm. Around 12, the lady will conveniently fly and go for a meeting. See this meeting you came for, that you labor to defeat traffic to come here. In the demonic home, everybody appear on their seat. You don't need to walk into the meeting. If the meeting is 12 midnight, by 12 midnight, everybody appear on their seat and it's not a news. Meanwhile, here, if Somebody shows up on the seat. Oh! We, we, it will go around Nigeria that a superman has come. Meanwhile, that's a normal thing in the demonic realm. You can't come, you fly to your meeting, you show up on your seat. They are more spiritually intelligent. I'm telling you, 
I told you yesterday that when Jesus was born, eh, the wise men from the east knew that he was born. They traced him, located him before the first prophet knew. They are more diligent about spiritual matters. There are many witches in this state in order to power what God is doing. Every year they fast for eight months. You, you fast for 21 days and it's a, it's, a, it's a city-wide announcement. And they have run that schedule for 15 years. And then you come because 12 of us gather. We say we want to shake this territory. You don't know the powers of altars. Those who have been long in the demonic realm, as long as you have been in church, you'll be sure of what they can do. Those are the things you are still talking about as stories. So you come for your meeting, you are quoting Benson Itahosa. You are quoting Baba Lola. And then you say it loud to invoke things. But a witch who is your mate in the demonic realm, he doesn't need to quote it. He will just come. He knows what, to, he knows what will happen if he does the sound like this. There is real time interaction. They understand the business of spirit and they understand the game of interaction. We now, an angel appears to you and it's a news. And you will say that news for 10 years. But these guys interact with demons every day. Because they know how to manage the nature of the devil. But we don't know how to manage the nature of God. So the things that should be realities, they have become breaking news. And we talk so big. One witch in a family of 15 people. Every day they are talking. How that they have power over the devil. Meanwhile, the witch never makes a statement. The only statement he's making is that after three years, somebody will die. And the believers will wake up and say, what is happening? What is happening? Then after six months again, they come up. God, we have power over. We will trade upon scorpions and serpents. And nothing by me. The means will never say anything. After three years, somebody will die. And then when it becomes too much, they will now invite intercessors. And then they will pray, pray for something to happen. When I saw these things, I said, I will never be fake. If it means staying and being unknown for 10 years, I will stay there. But the devil should not make mockery of our faith. We even come to church, people are falling down. We are screaming, power, power, power. But real life and real time challenges of people cannot be handled. You go to your office, that's your power. Nobody notices you have power. You go to the, you go to the market, nobody notices you have power. And then when you come to church, you sing familiar songs. And you tilt the emotion of people. They say power, power. Nature. The nature of God must become an operating system in the life of every believer if we will affect our territories. How is the nature of God developed in your soul? One is by what you feed on. You see, the human nature dies when you stop feeding it. It's a real-time experiment. If you don't eat for three days now, your eyes will become like this. If somebody talks, you say, uh -huh, what did you say? You say, no, I said, how are you? <laughs> Everything they say, they'll say it three times. Now, if you have, for those who have stretched for seven days, after three days, on the fourth day, hunger will diminish. Because somehow your body will become used to feeding itself. But what will happen is that you notice that all your joints will become heavy. You want to carry your leg like this. Your leg will be like the leg of three men. The body is shutting down because you have not fed it for seven days. Meanwhile, there are some of us here where for four months we have not fed our spirit. So when you see your spirit man is like this, you are wondering why you want to stop lying but you can't. It's because the nature of God is dying. You are wondering why you want, to, you want to do certain things for God, but you can't. The nature of God is what? He's dying. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone. He said, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. How do men live by bread? 
in Matthew 6, 11, he said, give us this day our daily bread. So man lived by bread daily. The same way your spirit was what? Live by the word of God daily. Every day there must be a light from God's word that your spirit encounters. You will pursue it. And when I say the word of God, I'm not talking about the Logos. I'm talking about the Rema word of God. That means you may need to sit down and meditate on the word of God for two hours. But by all means, make sure that light breaks upon your soul. He said to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13, he said, Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Because what you are pursuing is not the knowledge about God, it's the knowledge of God. God must break out of his word as a vote of light into your spirit man. If it means you will sit down and read for long until something is crystallized from the word, you will sit there. If it means you will meditate until something is crystallized, you will sit there. And if nothing is happening, you pick a message, that's exhortation. You listen until your spirit contacts something. That's how you live. And it's a daily routine. Billy Graham said he read three Psalms and one proverb every morning for inspiration. That's not his study here too, for inspiration. So without miracles, preaching only one sermon for 68 years, he was gathering stadiums. You, you think it's about intelligent preaching. So when you come, after five minutes, you talk this, talk this, talk this. The guy was preaching John 3.16 for 68 years. His message was the message of the cross. And in the last sermon where he preached, the message was streamed to more than 17 nations. He was in one nation, and there were screens in stadiums. And stadia were packed in different nations. People were in different... The man was not raising people. He was just preaching what? For God. Before you came for the meeting, you knew what he would preach. But there is a force that will still drag you to come for the meeting. Because they knew how to service the nature of God. They serviced it every morning. There is no day that they have not caught one light from the word of God. They sat there. He said, my son, in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20, he said, give attendance to my word. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. He said, they are life to them that find them. They are life. You want to quicken the nature of God on your inside. You will eat the word of God like bread. In Jeremiah 15, 16, he said, I found thy word. I did eat it and it became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. This part of Christianity is not the euphoria dimension. There's no excitement about it. Because when you sit alone and you are looking on the word of God, you will not jump up and shout. But this is where the spirit of a man is invigorated. So suddenly you come out and then the Holy Ghost wants to express himself through you. He flows like a river. Because you are saturated with the word of God. There will be no scarcity of utterance. It's easy for the Holy Ghost to navigate in any direction because you have been flooded with light. When you see a man struggling in the spirit, there is deficiency of light. He said in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. He said the life was the light of men. So when a man interacts with the Word of God, naturally, God flows out of him as light. And I told you, light is not absence of darkness. Light is that dimension of God's word that breaks out of you, that confounds darkness. So darkness is there, notwithstanding, but God prospers through you. So you come to your family, they say, nobody will graduate, nobody goes to school. Before you know what is happening, you are in 400 level. You are not praying about it. The reason is because light is shining in darkness. They put poison for people, they match it and their legs swell up. You match the same poison, you didn't know. Three days later, the person comes and kneels down and says, Who are you? Who are you? I put poison yesterday, you matched it. How come you have not died? Light is breaking out of darkness. The reason is because you have interacted with the word of God. Most of the things you pray about, they are actually things that will be the key of wonder. But because there is no light breaking out of you, it becomes a challenge. When a man is saturated with the word of God, 
the word of God brings out of him as light. As light. Every strategy of the devil around his life will be like puppets. You know, they said, when Samson was bound with chains, he will wake up and he will break it. The people thought they have tied him. Meanwhile, he's enjoying his sleep. When he wakes up, he'll just do like this. The chains will fall. I say, what is, there is something happening on his inside. They tell you this food was poison. You now say, eh. They thought you will now say, hey, hey, God help me. See, light will make us operate at different energy levels. Somebody, they may put poison in his food. By discernment, we know. There is a man in the east, his name is Benebu Omeke. He went for a meeting. After he preached, they poisoned the food in the morning, gave him. Apart from the poison they put, they broke glass. This guy is a consultant, he's a medical doctor, so he knows the implication. They poured it in the food. When he carried it, ah, he saw something. He dropped it, he carried it again, he saw something. He now said, who brought this food? If I share my testimony, you think I'm proud, so I will not share my testimony. But we tell you about people that are walking in this dimension. Who brought this food? When they traced, they now discovered when they were preparing for the program, somebody suggested and volunteered to be part of the workforce and decided she will work with them in the kitchen. When you are organizing programs, put only people you know in the kitchen so that you are not responsible for killing a vision. Because not everybody has light. When they discovered, they discovered the lady that brought the food had left that morning. So they went and brought the lady. That was when the lady knelt down and was apologizing and said she was paid to kill him. What did you put in this thing? She brought it out, poison. And then she also broke glass and poured it inside. And the Bumiki laughed. He blessed the food and ate it. He carried the drink and shot and drank it. They were advising him, sir, please, please, wait, 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 wait. The guy said, the light shines in the darkness. The darkness does not what? Comprehend it. The devil plans every strategy, but he doesn't know why it's not working. And then these kinds of people grow in it so much that they don't need to do the kind of publicity that you do. He said, John was in the wilderness. But he said, the whole of Judea went to him. What was he saying? Every time he speaks, an angel echoes his voice. So you can be in your house, but you can't rest. until John. If you don't hear John, your spirit man is dry. Because the light shines in darkness. He may not need to recite the Torah. Because in his generation, everybody was a reciter of the Torah. All he needed to do was to cry. And even Herod, every time he needed ventilation, he went to hear the voice of John. Because what that guy was uttering, was his spirit crying through a mortar vessel. Every time God is formed in the soul of a man, his voice becomes the voice of God. This is why we sit on the scripture. The idea is not to preach. If you read the Bible to preach, you are a foolish man. It says, strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. When a man is saturated with scripture, the circumstances that the devil puts in the paths of men in order to shut down their lives, they become places where that man demonstrates the life of God. What you call a limitation is actually a stepping stone for the man. See, we have seen a lot of controversies. When God began to raise us from the woods of Makodi, we didn't know anybody. We didn't even know how we would be known or heard. But stumbling blocks and limitations were littered in our past every day. And every time a crisis or a calamity comes, before you think, a word of God jumps out. And as simple as it is, you will utter it. And then it will change everything. So we knew the secret of power. The secret of power was the availability of the Rema word. So every time you see a sick person, before you think, a word jumps out of your spirit. And then you know that if you utter that word, something will shake. This is why sometimes we come for power meeting, we say, shut the sound. We don't need sound. All we are doing, we are checking in the spirit for a word. The moment the word came, the prophets of old knew this technology. So they will be like, like, like cats. Sit down as if they have no power. Wait until the word of God comes to them. 
Then you hear, he say, the word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. So the man can go to the valley of dry bones and begin to speak to dry bones. There is no intelligence by which you can resurrect a dry bone and form an army. But what happened is that what? The word of the Lord came to me. My sisters were old in the house. One was 34 years, two were 32. They were not getting married. All the vigils were done until the word of the Lord came to me. He said, you are a priest over your family. And your word is law. Instantly I went to them. I said, I discharge you. In six months, three of them got married. Because the word of the law. <laughs> See, this matter is a matter of nature. He said, let us make man in our own image. And let them have what? Dominion. The moment the nature of God is born on your inside, dominion becomes a byproduct. The word of the law. If you know how hard it is, you will trade it with caution. It is the most hard substance that God commits to humanity. His wars. His wars are as deep as himself. His wars are as potent as himself. God allows the soul of a man to be able to interact with the world. Because he wants the soul of a man to become an effulgence of his reality. A man who interacts with the word of God. A point comes when his life becomes like a theater. Every time you want to see God, look upon that man. The Bible said when Jesus was walking the earth, he said he was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. So every dimension of God that was shrouded in the Old Testament, if you want to understand it, look at Jesus. You may be debating the doctrine, is God willing to heal the sick all the time? You may not even understand it by reading the whole Bible, but look at Jesus. Every time a sick person came to him, he healed him. That means Jesus, God always healed the sick. So if God is not healing the sick through you, it's not because he doesn't want to. You don't know the technocracy of healing the sick. The word of God becomes the unveiling of the dimensions of God. Every time a man interacts with the word of God, that man becomes a mobile theater. Every time you look upon that man, he is lost. What you see is God. This is how territories are taken over. The prophets of old understood the dynamics. So before they spoke to territories, they waited for the word of the Lord to come to them. It's a mechanism of life. But unfortunately, we are not people that do business with the word of God. We read the Bible to preach. That's why we are weak. He says, strong meat belongs to them. Who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern. To discern. So you want to get married, it's not a prayer point. You will be walking and doing your thing, just going like a crazy man on mission. And then suddenly, Bishop Oedipo was in the park and he heard, this is your wife. He went to her and said, marry me. See, there's no, you don't woo them. They know. When they see the man, they too will be aware. It's not a game of wooing. It's two destinies coming together. Because by reason of ascendancy in heaven, they know the patterns of their destiny. So the lady is listening to church. She knows you will come to her. It's not a prayer point. She knows. If you want to fulfill your destiny, the dealings that the Holy Ghost have carried me through, He prepared me to make this kind of destiny work. So she is not praying. She may never even appear to be known. But when a man understands the mystery of the world, the dimensions of heaven will open. This amen becomes his heritage. The reason men struggle is because of it. He said the light of their spirit. He said the light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. But before the light shines, the word became life and the life was the light. You want the light of God to break, start break out of your fountain. Then the word of God must become your daily contemplation. Why do you think Job was great? In Job chapter 24 verse 3, he said, by light I walk through darkness. He said, when the candle of God was upon my head, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacles. He said, I washed my leg with butter. He said, the, fat, the, the rocks poured out oil to me. Is that a normal man? He knew secrets. He knew mysteries. He knows, he knows how to unlock the heaven so that the rain will come. So when people are crying over season, the guy knows, he knows secrets. He said, they, uh, Isaac was to run to Egypt like every other person. The word of the Lord came to him. He said, stay still in Gera. And he said, that same year, the guy sold in dry land, in the wilderness. And he said he reaped a hundredfold return until a nation began to envy him. He was bigger than a nation because he understood the technology of the world. We can't take territories if we are talking philosophies that are born out of the systems. I see a lot of believers 
same things, they even use it to preach. When you find out where did they get it from, they got it from Big Brother Niger. Okay, so that's what you are feeding up. <laughs> and then it comes, it thinks it's about shouting. That is why we use tools of manipulation, tools of psychology now, and we call it the move of power. You say things that make people emotional, and then they cry, you say it's power. You use sounds, songs that they are used to, and then, oh, you say it's power. The princes in darkness will look at us and laugh, because they know we don't know the secret of power. But in the days of the prophets, a man will sit in the wilderness, and then he will stand up like this, and walk into the palace, and say, by this time tomorrow, what do you think he had? There is so much poverty in the land that women are eating their children. And then you stand up and walk to the king and say, by this time tomorrow, are you okay? He knows the intelligence of the world. He knows that when the word of God comes, even the foundations of the earth can be reconfigured. Because he said all things were made by the word of his power. We cannot be warriors unless the word of God becomes a potent tool in our artillery. That's why Paul came. He said, finally, my brethren, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. You don't know what it means to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. The mind of God, the ways of God, the philosophy of God, the life of God should become your operating system. It will take you interacting with the world deep, so deep, before that kind of thing can happen. All of us can say we are believers and we go up quoting, I am the righteousness of God. Don't worry. When circumstances come, we know who is the righteousness of God. Let God send all of us to Saudi Arabia. And then you look at ladies that if, you, if they sweat, they sweat with drip until it touches their leg. That's when you will know who is the righteousness of God. <laughs> See, some people's frame can't bear it. They will begin to shake like this. You go to a place to preach and then all the ladies you see are glowing like Bob. You will know whether righteousness is a reality in your soul or it is just a quote. Or you come to a point where these people throw themselves at you. Oh, you will know who is the righteousness of God. Many of us are talking. When the princes want to check us out, they bring circumstances. They say no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. The reason is because they will look at you. They see your, your bloodline. They know the things that you people are weak to. I told you yesterday, Abraham lied, Isaac lied, Jacob lied. Abraham loved fair women, Isaac loved fair women, Jacob loved fair women. So if they come to somebody from the Jacob clan, all they need to do is to tailor a very fair damsel and they will bring it. If you pass that test, then you are truly the righteousness of God. At that point, it's not Z. At that point, it's what you carry on your inside that we speak. The reason most men fall is because they think they are strong. You are not strong because you are zealous. You are strong because the word of God has enveloped your soul. You can't think outside of the word of God. That is why you can see a lady strip herself and you say, this is against the ways of God. Joseph said, how can I commit this evil against God? You will think it's easy until you stand before a queen. You don't know what he passed through. He went through fire, but the word of God shielded him because he had capacity in the spirit. You may think because you are bold, you can challenge the spirit. Until you confront a dimension that is orchestrated from the demonic realm. That's when you will know the only thing that sustains the potency of fighting in the spirit is the word of God. But many people are not flooded with light. So we talk boldly about God, but in the face of circumstances, it is revealed how epileptic we really are. Our weaknesses are revealed in the face of crisis. But men who truly do business with the word of God is in adversity that you see their strength. The glory of God, the brightness of God is revealed when the man is in crisis. You will not admire the stability of Job's life when he was wealthy until you saw when he was full of sorrow. And they say, insult God and die. And he laughs. Are you like one of the foolish women? Then you will know that a man has traveled beyond the influences of humanity. A man has traveled. Even the devil, he confounded the philosophy of the devil. The devil said, why do you think Job fear you? It's because you have formed a shield around him. God said, go and break the head. He broke the head. Job was still standing. Job came again and said, skin for skin. A man will give anything for his skin. God said, go and strike him, but don't kill him. His body was littered with sore. He was still standing. So what Job proved to the devil was that I'm not a man. I am an immortal being clothed in a human vessel. If you want to know my dimension, go and study God. 
Because what I am is God walking in a human vessel. I am a mobile God. Because he said, according to the archive that we have studied in the demonic realm, we know that a man will give anything for his skin. He now hurt the skin of Job. Job was still standing. That's not a normal man. But what makes men travel to that level is when the word of God becomes their operating system. How much of the word of God is in your spirit? You may think you are strong. The reason is because you are among believers. We went to NYC orientation camp about seven years ago. Bro, the first three days we came, I saw many preachers. After 14 days in camp, every evening people were walking two by two. That was when preachers became lover boys on campus. <laughs> it was only 21 days. So a man, a man's delicate balance can be broken in 21 days. Yes. Because they came under a territorial energy. They didn't know that the camp was not church. They didn't know that the camp was not home where they left. The camp was a hub of darkness. There were many princes that ruled over that region. When they came under their radar, they thought it was normal. I was telling you yesterday how certain very good young ladies, they go to campus and in three months they are disflowered. The reason is because the energy there is different. Their soul began to interact with energy that they could not handle. So suddenly it choked them. But the only way you can become stronger than everything the devil throws at you is when you are flooded with the light of the word of God. He say, my son, attend to my word. Give attendance to my sins. Let them not depart from thy heart. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. They are alive to them that find them and held to all their flesh. He said, guard your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. So the reason a man is able to stand in darkness and still emit the glory of God is because the heart is guarded. The word of God is his operating system. That is a man that can challenge the powers in the territory. Because when he comes, even if the prince comes to him, he will find nothing. Jesus came into Zebulun and the Bible said that it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali. By the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Why was that possible? He said, the prince of this world come to me and found nothing. So when Jesus entered the territory, even when he was not yet talking, it was recorded in the spirit realm that light had come. The reason we pray a lot, nothing happens, is because our soul is still clogged with darkness. So the devil will, may not even attack your prayer. The devil will attack your soul. If your soul is corrupt, you are already his agent. And he said, if the house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. He says, Satan is not divided against itself. What you are doing is a religious show. If you truly want to affect the territory, your soul will first of all come under the government of the word of God. You will make it a practice to sit on the word of God until light crystallizes out of it. He said, until I come. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation and to doctrine. You wouldn't know why Paul gave Timothy such rigid instruction. Timothy was 17 years old when he was the bishop of Ephesus. Paul knew that his youth could be despised. Paul knew that it was possible for him to behave like every other young man. So he said, live your life as an example to other men. But the only way the guy could stand accurate was for him to what? Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Let the word of God become your operating system. Then you can be truly an example. Not just to men, but to princes in darkness. Because what you don't know is that God uses us as an example in the spirit realm. When Job came and thought he had colonized the whole world, he said, have you seen my servant Job? God will not boast of a man unless that man is stable on the word of God. He said in Isaiah 33 verse 6, he said, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The reason you see many men fluctuating up and down, there's no light. The word of God have not formed their philosophies. The word of God have not formed their ideologies. Their thinking pattern have not yet been reconfigured by the word of God. But a man who travels enough with the word of God, he becomes a spirit among men. He becomes an immortal witness among humankind. Even God in heaven can boast of that man. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, he said, God have raised us to be manifold witnesses to the principalities and powers. So angels can come to take lessons from you.
are not standing now because you are standing. Let me tell you. You are standing now because you are saturated with the word of God. And that will be the only guarantee of your future. Don't think you will be standing tomorrow if you are not full of the word of God. I am telling you, don't assume you will be standing tomorrow. The only guarantee that you will stand tomorrow is if you are saturated with the word of God today. A lot of people thought they were standing until they traveled further. That's when they saw how weak they were. Paul said to Timothy, he said, when you ordain elders, don't ordain novices. Because when they rise, the devil will cut them off. Some of you, the reason the devil is allowing you is because where you are, where you are there is no proper visage. If he cuts you off now, it will not have a, a ripple effect on the church. So he's waiting. Your anointing is growing. He's waiting. Your fame is growing. He's waiting. He wants you to be known nationally. Then he will disgrace you publicly so that you will become a reproach to the body of Christ. Many people now will no longer believe in young men. And now forget all those young men. Forget them. Forget men. You don't know the injury you have created to the body. Jesus came to Peter and said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed that your faith faileth not. When thou art recovered, strengthen. So sometimes the devil waits for you to become a star. So a man who does not have a word of God in his spirit is a time bomb. The reason he has not fallen is because the devil is waiting for him. At this point, he will not profit darkness if he falls. He can fall now, hide and repent, and there will be no ripple effect. So the devil will wait for him to rise. Even your ordination will be at risk if you have not choked yourself with the word of God. Paul was traveling with John Mark. John Mark was being trained to become an apostle. But when they met controversy on their way, John Mark ran away. He thought he was ready. When they were still in Antioch, he thought, oh, come on, I will go for mission. He thought it was about willpower and zeal. Anything that is orchestrated from the demonic realm will choke your will. What will keep your will standing is the depth of revelation that he carries. When John Mark traveled with them and saw persecution, the guy said he is not going again. That was the reason Paul and Barnabas entered a sharp argument. And Paul said, okay, go. It was at old age, John Mark woke up again. And that time, he could no longer be an apostle. Paul said, call him, he's good for the work of a deacon. So his destiny was truncated because he didn't saturate himself with the word of God. There are many crises you will see. But if you are full of the word of God, those crises will be tools of strengthening your spirit. And they will become stepping stones for raising you in destiny. What will make a crisis, either a stumbling block for you or a stepping stone, is the quality of the word of God you have in your spirit. This is why men that are full of the word of God, they don't know challenges. Everyone that comes, they know they will go through it. They know. They just know it's a function of time. You don't break them. They can never break. Because everything that should break them, there is a rema word that comes out of their spirit. And that rema word becomes a ventilation. But you, you are in the middle of a crisis. Nothing is coming out of your spirit. So most times you are stranded. The Holy Ghost wants to speak, but there is no word of God in your spirit for him to amplify. This is why the business of the word of God is one of the credentials of a territorial warrior. You can't even be an intercessor unless you are full of the word of God. There is a height you can't climb to in the spirit unless you pray the word. Many believers are bereft of the word of God. And I have met many. I'm talking not just from theory. I have met many. This evening I will be preaching in Yola. I'm talking to 5,000 people. And I meet them like that every week. Last week I was in Chapel of Redemption in University of Calabar. I meet them every week. I know what I'm telling you. Many believers are bereft of the word of God. They meet you and they tell you little things. The reason is because their senses have not yet been exercised. Paul said, whoever desires milk is a babe and is unskilled in the word of righteousness. He said, but strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. A lady wants to marry and she thinks it's by pouring anointing oil on her head. What does God say about marriage? She is one, not prepared for marriage. Two, she doesn't even know what marriage is about. She thinks marriage is about two lovers coming together and making love. So she's looking for the guy that has a broad chest. Meanwhile, purpose is not in view. She doesn't even know why she's born. And then she wants the prophet to come and mobilize her and to damage the destiny of a young man who is gathered together. Or a vagabond, a young man who has not gathered his life. 
he just tumbles into church because he sees the, the lady serving God and now says, this is my wife. This is my, are you, you alright? The, the lady that God is preparing for, the man who will change the nation, you come out from your beer parlor with your scattered life because you saw her and she greeted you, welcome sir. You don't know how foolish some men are because they, they get respectful and say, good day sir. Ah, how are you? What is your name? Who told you I came here to tell you my name? <laughs> Many young people are bereft of the word of God. They don't have it in their spirit. This is why we are facing too many crises. Most of the things you call crises are actually designed for your promotion. But the problem is that there is no stamina in your spirit. So you want to become a man that can affect the territory. Begin by saturating yourself with the word of God. And remember, this thing is a matter of what? Nature. He said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them have dominion. The way you establish the nature of God back in your soul is by saturating yourself with the word of God. A point comes when you think like God. You act like God and then you do like God. Nature. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So if you are not living by the word of God, maybe you may be an Amoeba. God will not, the only proof that you are the man he's created is that what? You will live by the word of God. You may see on earth that Lord, the men are calling upon you. When they check from heaven, you may be a crayfish. If you are a man, they prove that you are a man, you will do what? You will not live by bread alone. You will live by what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hope you know that when the man fell, God came and said, He cursed the serpent. And He said, The serpent shall live on dust. He will feed on dust. Do you know who the serpent deals with now? It's men. Because the moment the man fell from the nature of God, he became dust. That's where he came from. He's dust. Apart from God, he is tossed. That's why the devil buffets a lot of people like puppets. The only thing that will make you not to be a dust is for the nature of God to return to your soul. So the devil comes and knocks them with high blood pressure. He kicks them with frustration. You want to become invincible in the realm of God. Feed on the word of God. Else you will be the food of the serpent. Dust. Man shall not live by bread alone. By every word but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Secondly, is what we call prevailing prayers. Sit down, brother. Prevailing prayers. I'm showing you these things and I'm keeping it very calm. I don't want to act spiritual about it. These things should be your everyday life. But these are the things that many believers are not doing. And I'm not just saying believers, pastors. There are many men of God today. They don't have any business with the word of God. They are philosophers. They are philosophers. Most of the things they are telling you, they heard it in movies. <laughs> Some of the things they are telling you, they heard somebody else say it. A man preaches for two hours and then you ask him, this scripture, where, what, where did you get it from? He doesn't know. He was listening to another preacher and the preacher quoted it. So he came and quoted the same thing. And then you think he's strong. Go to him with your challenges. Then you know that he's in a more confusion than you are. His state is worse than your own. He's only an orator. So he's giving expression and vocabulary to the voice of another man. Meanwhile, when the spirits come to check, they will go to the source where the revelation comes from. They will honor it. So the sons of Sceva came and said, in the name of Jesus, that Paul preaches. They say, wait, we know the name of Jesus is powerful, but we don't know you. You are not in the lexicon of the spirit. Where we check, there's no authority backing your name. He said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are thou? Mm. That Jesus you are quoting is strong in the mouth of Paul. But you, we don't know by what means you are quoting it. The same way we preach today. 
you pick three messages, you cut from here, cut from here, cut from here. And then you come and give expression to the message of three different people. When the spirit comes, they won't hear you. It's the voice of the man they are hearing. So when you want to do spiritual legislation, they will kick you out. You have no place in Zion. Because God himself will come and say, A dam, where are thou? You are not in the spirit. We can't find you. This thing you are talking about is a business of sons. And when we checked, we, you are not there. Where are thou? Where are thou? What are you saying? Who is talking? Who is talking? We are hearing a volume actually, but it's the voice of Bishop Oedipo we are hearing. We can't find who is talking. So the demon will come and help you and go away. Well, since, as far as I check, the man who is talking is not here. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We have become a generation of activities. Men of activities. But there is no proof. The reason is because we are not following the way, the patterns that the fathers have laid. In those days, people will sit down and do Bible study for six hours. They could talk scriptures into the night. Paul was teaching and he taught into the night. A man fell down, died. Eutychus. He came back, carried him, brought him back to life. They went back and continued teaching. Here we come to church. We want to hear, hey, 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 hey. The everybody's dancing. And all the dance we are dancing are the same dances that Davido invented. <laughs> we don't know why we are weak. Our philosophies are what? They are born from Hades. You know, I showed you what darkness is yesterday. I told you darkness is a civilization. Darkness is a system and darkness is a government. The civilization of darkness has colonized the church so deep it has eaten into the fabric of the souls of men. You see a preacher doing something, you think he's just being excellent. You will not know that that preacher is actually acting like the American president. <laughs> That's where he learned packaging from. Civilizations. But if we travel into the spirit, we will find our own pattern. May we find our own blueprint. Because when God created you, your whole dimension was there. That's when you will know how to blow the trumpet of your ordination. There's a principle of gleaning. You start by following people, but the point comes when you travel to a point, your own identity breaks out. So the disciples were following Jesus. After a while, Peter became an evangelical apostle. So Peter will walk like this. His shadow will heal the sick. John was not healing the sick like that, but he knew his own dimension. Did you notice when <laughs> Evangelist Siketuku gave an illustration two days ago, I was overwhelmed. When they came to the beautiful gate in Acts chapter 3, and the man was begging, Peter said, look on us. That means we are apostles. Say, silver and gold we don't have, but look on what? Us. Then when Peter wanted to minister the, to the man, he didn't say silver and gold we don't have. He didn't say such as we have. He says such as I. You are looking on us, but my own dimension is what I want to give you. So sometimes we come to church, we think we are all the same. It's a lie. If you are quoting people and following people, you will not have your dimension. He says look on us, but he says such as I have, give I unto you. He didn't say such as me and John have. He didn't say such as we have. Such as what? I'm sure of the one I carry. They followed Jesus as 12 disciples. A point came, Peter became what? An evangelical apostle. So he would come out of prayer. And then his shadow was healing the sick. There were 12 disciples going. That was his dimension. John became a prophetic apostle. So John will write a book and say, If you read this book, you are already blessed. You don't need to do what is in the book. If you read it, you are blessed. I mentioned, I mentioned. They prayed dead with the word of God until they found themselves. You may begin by following and copying a man, but if it is true that you are growing in the spirit, a point will come when you will find your own trumpet. When I started, if I talk, you think it's a pastor on your side. But he taught us principles, and as I followed the principle, a point came, I found myself. I am still submitted to him because he is my fountain, but I found myself. The goal is not to clone people, to become like one man. The goal is for people to discover who they are in God. And then through corporate alignment, we can receive stature inside. But men are not growing. We are babes. Many people are still wearing pampas in the spirit, but they have been in church for 15 years. 
to grow, the word of God must become your food. If you don't eat this word, you will not grow. That's what I'm saying. There is no magic about it. And if you don't grow, it's a problem. See the problem of not growing. You may be a child, you are still enjoying yourself. You know, children always ask, Mommy, bread. It's okay, take. I want to sleep now. Okay, come and sleep. You will think. The problem with being a child is that in warfare, you will be cut off. You can enjoy childhood until there is war. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 2 verse 18, it says Rachel was weeping for her children because they were not. You know what happened? They were slaughtered. It's an abomination to be a child in warfare. That's the crisis of not growing. It's a cost to be a child in the middle of war. So if you don't grow, what you have done is that you have set yourself up for destruction. This is why you must trade with this thing. It's not just that you will lose out of ordination, but in the day of warfare, you will be the first casualty. The victims of war are primarily women and children. You need to grow. And the devil knows the ones that are eating and growing. When you call for prayer vigil, you will not see anybody. But if you call for a feast, everybody comes in their best gown. See when the praise and worship is going on. People will be running to the altar. Ho, 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 ho. But when you say pray, suddenly so the energy dissipates. Some people will yawn 30 times in 5 minutes. You will see babes. If you want to send some babes in the church, come during the time of prayer. But we must grow. We must grow. We must grow. Tell somebody we must grow. If we must affect our territory, we must what? The second precursor is what? Prolonged or protracted or prevailing prayers. You know, the first time I met Apostle Arume, I almost, I almost turned back and went. He said, if you are 20 years old and you have not prayed in tongues for 10 hours, he said you are a clown. See, there is something long prayers does to your soul. You will not know how weak you are until you begin to trade on the altar. The altar reveals to you your weaknesses. And what it does is that it develops you so that your weaknesses can become your strength. That's why Jesus came in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means... The only way a man can be restored to be like God is by prayer. It is man's default mode to pray. We were created for prayer. Because prayer is a spiritual infrastructure for connecting essentially to God. So a man who does not pray does not understand how to relate with his spirit. He may study about that spirit from books. But for him to come into the environment of a spirit and learn the ways of that spirit, he must engage that spirit experientially. Prayer is the only way that is available to us to interact with the spirit of God until we become like him. So Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. But there are many believers who are not praying. You may think you are strong. If you want to check your energy in the spirit, go and begin to pray. You may bring a macho man here who can lift weight for 10 hours. And then all his muscles are like this. You now say, this one is strong. Then you bring a lanky person who is an intercessor. He says, okay, pray in tongues for 2 hours. After 15 minutes, the macho man will fall down. But that's when the guy who is lanky is charging. After 3 hours, he begins to jump like this. After 5 hours, he's walking like this. Eating. When he has seen 10 hours, that time all his spiritual senses have activated. At that time, he becomes a spirit. He can look at you and tell you that, Kai, don't travel tomorrow. You didn't tell him. Something has activated. He has picked his tools in the spirit. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That means there is a strength in the spirit that is not natural. You can begin with God with your natural strength. Like you came to church by ATP. But for you to do the business we are doing in the altar, you need to receive another kind of strength. He said in Isaiah 40 verse 28, he said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? That means when they check the lexicon of the spirit, the only being that does not have the ability to faint or be weary is God. But they also went further because there is a wisdom. 
We have checked the whole realms. Only God has the ability to continue operating and he doesn't weak, get weary or faint. The reason is because he's the El Shaddai. As the El Shaddai is the multi-breasted one, he sustains all and is sustained by none. Depression is not consistent with his nature. He said, have you not heard? Because this thing is popular in the spirit realm. All the spirits are aware that God doesn't know how to grow weak. But he now said, there is a technology that he made available to humankind. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Something happens to them. A dimension from God is downloaded. So they mount up with wings like eagles. He said, suddenly, a man, because before he gave you the contract, he said, even the young men shall be weary and shall utterly fall. That means, among the human race, the young men are the most strongest. He said, but compared with the Spirit of God, the young men have a destiny of fainting and becoming weary. But, whether you are young, old, or weak, there is a technology in God. They say, they that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like the eagles. Something now happens to them. He said, when they run, they will not be weary. When they walk, they will not faint. Why? They have become like God. So the possibilities that are locked up in God is also possible to operate in a man. The thing is not because the man is young or old. What will make the dimensions of God find expression in a man is his, his wisdom to take advantage of prayer. Because when he begins to pray, what makes God who he is and gives him his peculiarity, those same dimensions can begin to express themselves through a man. So you can see a man of 50 years, he is praying in tongues from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And then you now say, okay, uh, uh, if Baba can do it, me too I can do it because I'm a young man. So you now came. You will wake up around 12.30. Baba is still praying. You see, <laughs> there was a young preacher, Apostle told us. He went to see one of the fathers of the faith. And when he came, the man of God said, okay, we will pray in the night. So around 10, the man of God said, okay, let's pray. So the young guy stood up. Oh no! The roof of the house was shaking like this. After three hours, the young man went, and he slept off. He woke up around 1 a.m. Baba would just walk and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Around 3 a.m., he woke up. Baba was, thank you, Jesus. His prayer was going deeper. When the young man woke up around 6 a.m., Baba was still praying. Around 8 a.m., he saw Baba in the bathroom showering. Thank you, Jesus. And Baba went to the office like that. The man now came and knelt down <laughs> to be imparted. If your advantage is your gift and your charisma, you are weak. You will not know until you enter into the battle arena. Your advantage is not in your body, it's in the mountains of Zion. It is prayer that will take you there. Sometimes we say this thing humorously so people can relate. <laughs> my sisters, when we were young, they were beauty queens. In my house, I don't know why God did it like this, but me, I'm ugly. Maybe it's that ugliness that made me to pursue God. <laughs> when they were 24, 25, all their shoes were tall like this. That was when Brazilian wig was raining. They would go and fix one, 32,000. And then they will be walking like this. When I say, what type of shoe is shoe is this? They say, it's choker. That time, every man that saw them rushed to them. Until they became, one became 30. The other two became 28. That time, they now began to pray for marriage. Until one became 34. The other two became 32. That was when they realized that marriage is not a function of beauty. They now knew that the economy of marriage works by favor. You know, when they were young, they couldn't get the wisdom. They thought beauty was an advantage until they began to grow old. They now knew that there's no advantage in beauty. They know that advantage is favor. Beauty is on your face and on your body. Favor is in Zion. So you notice all the ugly girls around. When they are 24, they are married. And then you see the kind of men that marry them. One fair guy comes from Chevron. And then he marries her. And then you, who was the boss queen, you now discover that the next time you people met, they are coming with two children, three children. They are going for vacation in Canada. Then when they go back home, they begin to cry. They begin to cry. Beauty is still intact, but favor is still what? In Zion. So if you want to travel from beauty to favor, it's by prayer. 
You can be a preacher, you think it's about oratory. I did oratory for 13 years. The worst part was when I backed my master's degree. That time, if I want to preach, I will add chemistry. <laughs> I will be preaching, I will be talking about quantum mechanics because I did one of the hardest parts of chemistry. I will be talking about the mysteries of light, the laws of theoretical physics. I was talking, I, I love mysteries those days. I will come, I will talk to you about the angelic realm. I will talk about the mysteries that govern the heavenly operation. I will tell you about the 12 civilization of heaven. But when I preached, my honorarium was 2,000. <laughs> I was preaching in one location for 13 years. Until I understood that this thing is God that makes men. So I shut down, I began to pray. I began to pray. And when I was praying, I was not receiving answers. As I prayed, what I was receiving were laws. God was introducing me to all kinds of laws because he was chiseling my soul so that he can conduct himself. I didn't know that pride, arrogance had choked every chamber of my soul that the energy of God should flow through. I was speaking English, but I was not speaking spirit and life. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. The chambers of my soul was claw, pride, immorality, lust. Everything was there. I will be preaching and I will look at someone. Something will happen in my mind. This guy is fine. I didn't know what was going on. All of those things were impeding the flow of life. So when I began to pray, I now saw dimensions of prayer that was more than answers. I saw there is a dimension of prayer called reward. Jesus said, when you pray in secret, your heavenly father that sees in secret will reward you. He didn't say he will answer your prayers. I saw that reward was bigger than answers to prayer. The things I was praying for, I was praying for invitations, but I didn't see answers. I was receiving rewards. And rewards came as laws. The Holy Ghost put laws. Sometimes I go to a place, I labor, they will appreciate others and forget me. I will go back and cry. After a long time, it became normal. What I didn't know was that long suffering had been activated in my soul. The last one that happened, my friend that we were living together, both of us were sons of Apostle Arumi Osai. He is a good guy. He didn't do this thing to intimidate me, but God was moving him. And what he did was that I was a master's degree, a graduate that had a master's degree. This guy was an undergraduate. He was a pastor of a youth church. I was to be ordained a, a pastor in one of the global churches in this country. Because I was charismatic. God told me to join him. When I went to him, the guy went and put me in the ocean in the pathway. And he told me, in this church, we grow by rank. I said, what do you mean? Me and you are Apostle Arumel's sons. Am I coming to your church to you grow? As I wanted to say, the Holy Ghost vanished my mouth like this. I did it for one year, eight months. That was when I discovered I was very arrogant. Because it's an honor to sweep the house of God, regardless of who you are. I didn't know all of those lessons. But when God was done teaching me, God now came to me and said, this year, I will begin to announce you. <laughs> the word was casual. I didn't fall under the power. What did he say? This year, I will begin to announce you. On my birthday, he said, cut six of your clip. The same old messages that have lasted, that didn't work. He said, cut six of those clip and put on telegram. And now cut it. My friend, a young man who wouldn't let me rest, Samson Oson, he came and collected it. And he tagged it, Puritan capsules. And he dropped it online. In 14 days, I received invitation from 17 nations. 14 days was more important than 13 years because his spirit was sitting on the voice. <laughs> I saw the powers of prayer beyond everything that you can imagine. A spirit came and said, What? Well, I will begin to announce you. My honorarium changed from 2,000 to 150,000. So the job that God stopped me from working. What I earn in a month is four times what I would have earned, either as a lecturer or as a naval officer. I got a window to become a naval officer. That was my ambition. God said, don't go there. My people could not understand. I thought you said you are looking for a job. Now you have a job in where you dream of. God said, don't go. Now, in three weeks, I turned down 30 invitations. I now knew that Open door is not a function of intelligent preaching. The same way I knew transformation was not a function of doctrinal exegesis. It is the spirit that you communicate. But before you can communicate the spirit, something will happen to your soul. That's why I told you, some of you, what you call disgrace is actually a school of the spirit. Some of you, what you call setback is a school of the spirit. There is something in you called pride. It will not allow the voice of God to be heard. Every time you are talking, your pride stands like this. 
it blocks God and people can't see God. And God wants you to communicate Him. So what He will do is that He will break you. He will break you. When Jacob was traveling, he was traveling with the Abrahamic blessing. He was the only custodian of the Abrahamic blessing on earth. So by reason of ordination, he should prosper. But there was no way God could walk with him. When he touched the altars that Abraham built, prayer rose up to heaven and an angel showed up. He broke his thigh bone and he said as a prince, thou hast power with God and hast prevailed. So the reason the guy will rule among men was not because he carried the blessing. It was because he became a prince. He was broken. The same song you sing can announce you to the nations. The hair you make can announce you to the nations. The only difference is for a spirit to alight on it. You can say pure water and be a millionaire. The difference is for a spirit to alight on it. But before a spirit will fraternize with a man, he must accept the government of that spirit. This is where men are made. This is where stories of people are changed. But all of these things are born by prayer. If you don't pray, you can't perceive the windows of heaven. The atmosphere of Zion cannot crystallize on your soul. So every season in Jesus' life, he activated it by prayer. The Bible said he went to the wilderness. The Holy Ghost led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But when he was going to the wilderness, he changed the season. He altered it. That was a season of temptation. But by prayer, Jesus turned it to a season of promotion. So when he was coming down from what should be the mountain of temptation, he became the mountain of announcement. So he left the mountain of temptation, he came down, the Bible says his fame went abroad. According to heaven, it was a season of temptation. But prayer changed it to a season of announcement. You did not notice that when they were at the marriage feast in Canaan, the wine was finished. They thought it was time for scarcity. Mary came to Jesus and Jesus said, it is not yet my time. But Mary say, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That means if you can pray, you can change your seasons. The promotion that is for five years, you can change it and make it next week. If you can invest enough prayer to Zion, prayers can all tie your season and change it for good. Jesus changed the season of temptation into a season of promotion. It's a mystery in Zion. Prayer is deeper than everything you think it is. You will be on one spot if you don't master the art of praying. A prayer is not your operating system. You will remain on one spot. Even the things that were your advantage, the seasons will pass, you will not use them. It is only prayer that sets the coordinates of Zion aright, so that everything that constitutes the advantage of a man can come into place, and the purposes of God can be born. Only men of prayer can discern seasons and maximize them. When Jesus was born, the Pharisees were in the temple, reading the laws of Moses and reciting the Torah, but there were three men that were praying. One of them was a woman. Her name was Anna, the prophetess. Another one was Simeon, the prophet. They were praying. The moment Jesus came, the Bible said, Simon went into the temple by the Spirit. The Spirit himself took him there. This is the season. Because he knew the intelligence of prayer. John showed out from the wilderness. And when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. How did he know him? Because he was separated in prayer. Some of you, your season will come, you will not recognize it. You will think it's, it's a season of disgrace. That's the time. That's what God has arranged for your glory. The reason God shrouded it in mystery is because if it is common, people can know it and take it away from you. The Bible said the mysteries, He said God has hid these things in mystery for your glory. But if you don't pray, you can't discern it. The things that should be your promotion, sometimes they come like insult. Sometimes they come like disgrace. It will take the eyes of discernment to see it. But the eyes of discernment are born on the altars of prayer. Abraham was trusting God for 25 years. The day the child came, he came as three men. Walking past his house and he said, Sass, Sass. He knew that these are not men. These are not men. He said, come into the house. They refused. He insisted. He said, sit down. Let me make supper. They refused. He insisted. When he fed them as they were living, God turned to him and said, in the next time of life, your wife Sarah will be with child. Faith of 25 years was consummated by a moment of discernment. The goal is prayer. You don't pray. When your answers come from heaven, you may not recognize it. This is why many believers are backward. And they cannot make impact in their generation. If a man can pray, the man can turn the tides of heaven and cause the rain to fall in dry season. 
Elijah told the king that rain will fall, but the heavens were dry. He went on his knees, and the Bible says seven times, seven times, he sent his servant go and look until he formed the feast by prayer. What appeared in heaven was not there. He formed it by prayer. He created that season by force because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man are God. He make a dynamic power available. They tell you your life will not work. They are joking. The only reason your life will not work is because you don't know the gate of prayer. If you know the intelligence of prayer, anything you want can happen. If only you can stay long enough. If you can stay long enough. When Elijah told the king rain will fall, the cloud was dry. But he knows that he knows how to pray. I know how to pray. Anything I say, I can make it happen on the altar. So he went to the altar. He created rain on the altar. He created it. He created rain on the altar. Nothing is difficult for a believer. If only he can pray. Your destiny can turn around in two weeks. The plague and the crisis you have experienced for ten years, you can change it in two weeks. They told John Austin's wife she was going to die in three days. She gathered 40 scriptures and was tonguing on those scriptures. 40 days became three months. It became eight months. It became ten years. She changed her story by prayer. Hannah came to Shiloh year in, year out. Nothing was happening. Everything she knew to do, she had given the seeds, she had given the sacrifices. Nothing was working. She left everybody and went to prayer. She prayed until her, her, her leaves were stammering. The priest saw her and thought she was drunk because of the depth she was praying from. And that day her story changed. People who are wise understand that prayer is one of the most potent infrastructure of downloading the dimensions of heaven. You can bet your season by prayer. You can create spiritual possibilities by prayer. You can end temptations by prayer. You can activate seasons by prayer. But men are not praying. We are looking up to people to change our story. The secret is prayer. That's why Jesus dwelt on his knees all his life. They saw him healing the sick every day. They didn't tell him to teach them how to heal the sick. They said, teach us how to pray. That means Jesus prayed more than everything in his life. They saw everything happening around him. They knew that it was prayer that bettered it. So they asked for the grace to pray. They said they look up to him and they were radiant. Their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. How many can look up to him? Your story can turn around. You can change your territory. If only you pray enough until God is born on your inside. Then authority is conferred on your walls. When you come to the territory, it's a time to decree. It's no longer a time to pray. But you would have prayed at the backside. Men who changed their walls were men of prayer. They were locked away in caves because they knew that only when you touch heaven can you change earth. They knew. They knew. Daniel was not in the palace. A hand came and wrote on the wall. And when they needed to know the meaning, they went and invoked the man of prayer. They knew that that kind of wisdom could not be crystallized in the palace. Only men that talk with spirits can get such wisdom. And when he showed up, he said, Mene, mene. This hand came from where I dwell. The city where I travel to in the spirit, that's where this hand came from. I don't need a teacher to read it. I know this language. Where I go to heaven, this is the language they speak. They say, Mene, mene. Take care of our sin. Mene, mene. Before the guy even he read the writing, he went around and made a mockery of the king. He said, your father, God gave him the kingdom and gave him power and authority. He raised the kingdom and the dynasty, touched the ends of the earth. He said, it was handed over to you and you came to worship the God of stone and iron. He said, therefore is this hand come. Mene, mene. Take care of our sin. He said, you have been weighed on the balances. How did he know how men are weighed? Who taught him that there is a system in the spirit for weighing men? The errors of men are weighed. And they say, your kingdom has been divided from your hand. And it has been given to the maidens and the patients. That night the king fell. Because a man came from the spirit realm. You want to dwell in heaven. The gateway is prayer. You don't pray, you can't be relevant. There is not one man that changed this world without prayer. Even when God looked at the earth. And he said he will destroy everything in the earth. One man changed, made God to change his mind. His name was called Noah. He said, Noah... 
found grace with God. You will think Noah was lucky. The Bible says God looked at the earth. He said he will destroy man and beast. Nobody was qualified. But there was something Noah was doing. It was when Noah came out of the ark in Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 that we knew what Noah was doing that made Noah develop the stature to cause God to change his mind. He said, Noah raised an altar unto the Lord. So one man was more important than the whole world. It's possible for one man to save the territory, but he will need to know the dynamics of all tasks. He must know the ways of prayer. He may not be popular, but he can sit in his bedroom and he say, Lord, give the earth one more year of mercy. And then you will think it's the number of churches that is making things happen. The Bible said in Colossians 4.12, Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayer that you may stand perfect. That means the whole nation was standing perfect because Epaphras was praying. God rose up in Exodus 32. He said, I will wipe out Israel. How about the covenant he had with Abraham? It didn't count. And Moses will rise up in intercession and say, how do you want it to be heard? That's a man talking with God. Men are not the same, my brother. Men of prayer are ranking men in Zion. They consult with spirits. They talk to angels. And they give commands from heaven. How do you want it to be heard? That you, the everlasting God, deliver them from captivity and destroy them in the wilderness. He said, repent. I thought it's God that tells men to repent. Rank in the spirit. You can come and speak over your family and things will change. This is what the elders of old knew. So when they bless their children, they don't give them cattles. You will hear that Abraham was old and stricken in age. The Lord had blessed him in all things. When he wanted to settle Isaac, he didn't give him cattles. He said, El Shaddai keep you. He gave, he spoke. That word he spoke. Even inflation cannot defy it. When Isaac wanted to bless Jacob, he didn't give him a cattle. He said, I bless you with the dew of heaven. I bless you with corn and wine. He gave him the seal of authority that he had in the spirit. So Isaac, anywhere he goes, he will prosper. Anywhere Jacob goes, he will prosper. A man of prayer was talking from heaven. They could curse you. And if you like, get a job with Chevron, you will not prosper. He told Jacob, he told jo, uh, his first son, Reuben, he said, you are the beginning of my strength. That means by reason of nature, you should be a mighty man. He said, but as unstable as water, you will not prosper. He cursed the guy, and the guy, no matter what he did, he couldn't prosper. Until another man of prayer came, and Moses entered into heaven. And he climbed into where Jacob was standing when he cursed Reuben. And he said, let Reuben live and not die. They changed systems by prayer. They changed civilizations by prayer. They altered territories by prayer. These men don't talk. They talk after they have prayed. You can walk to your family today and say, I banish death and nobody will die. You can come to your family today and look at your brother that graduated from the university and cannot get a job. And you say, you are settled. And in one week, his story can change. If only you will pray enough. There is a place in Zion where men are decorated with the badge of authority. But only men of prayer can travel there. And you rise up and pray for one minute. young women in order for our destinies not to be wasted these things must become our lifestyle this morning we want to pray Lord give me the life of prayer I know before now I pray for things before now I pray for results but Lord I want prayer to become my life give me a life of prayer this is beyond grace to pray in certain seasons. This is prayer becoming your operating system. Lord, give me the life of prayer. Go ahead and pray. You will know why Moses was mighty. You will know why Daniel was mighty. You will know why Jacob was mighty. You will know why Abraham was mighty. There was 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.